All right, finally, back in the studio. I did want to start this off by saying I do apologize to some of our avid listeners because we haven't been putting out as many episodes. We haven't been sticking to the quote-unquote set schedule, which I think I might do away with the set schedule. But for the lack of episodes, it's due to, as some of you know, I did put in my notice at my job. I've been trying to find a new job. I think I found a new job. I was really sick there for a little while. Uh, Some people... It's flu season, so some people who were supposed to come on ended up being sick. So I wish everything went smoothly all the time. It just, life doesn't always work that way. But in the studio today, we do have Tommy Two Phones, Tommy Haggerty. And as usual with Tommy, we talk everything entertainment. He's kind of my entertainment guru. I should probably just call the episodes with Tommy the entertainment hour. But it was a lot of fun. I always have fun with Tommy. I hope you guys enjoy it as well. And here you go. Here's Tom. Tommy Two Phones back in the studio. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to hell. <laughs> and we do actually have uh, Carl working behind the scenes, getting the job done as always. Hey. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Carl. It's a pleasure to have you tonight. Pleasure's all mine. Uh, so for, for those of you who maybe didn't realize it from our last episode, Tommy's kind of my go-to entertainment film TV guru. <laughs> that's right <laughs> so, i'm a lazy ass and i watch a lot of tv and movies so uh last time and usually we do a top five movies uh and me and tommy did ours last time actually you know one thing i wanted to do was maybe edit my list tommy have you ever seen with honors with honors um is that with uh shit is that with uh brendan Fraser? yep and, and uh Sean Connery or Joe Pesci. Joe Pesci. Joe Pesci plays a homeless guy. I fucking how, love that movie. It's dude. so good. How did you go Sean Connery or Joe Pesci though? Because Sean Connery was <laughs> in that one movie with uh, with the guy from um, Coach Carter. You know what I'm talking about. He also played uh, Sam Jackson. No, no. <laughs> Ron, well, Sam Jackson was in uh, Coach, Coach Carter. Carter. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, he's like Roy Brown or Ray Brown or something. Big, I have no idea what you're talking big, about. Big tall black guy. He was in. Uh, the Express. Oh no! Yeah, you're talking about uh, Finding Forrester. Yeah, also a good yeah, movie. dude. Yeah, such a good movie. Yeah, man. it's a great movie. But I, this is this might actually be in uh, my top five as well. With honors, huh? Yeah, with honors. A bum helps a Harvard uptight uh, top of his class student learn how to live life. <laughs> I think it's awesome. I haven't seen it in a very long time, but I used to watch it like... I, I owned the DVD at one point. I knew yeah. That. Well, I'm about to purchase it just on Amazon because there's no Blu-ray, so I figure why bother with buying a DVD, so I'm just going to purchase it on Amazon, so you'll be able to check it out. Okay. I also... Four Feathers is on there. What's that? What's Four Feathers? That's that one with uh, Heath Ledger. Oh, yeah. That's on there. Yeah, I want to see that. Yeah, you can check it out on there. So, do I have to add a movie? To my list, dude? No, I no. I just, I remembered that I really wanted to tell you that because somehow it popped in my head the other day when I was doing this with somebody, and I was like, man, I have to tell Tommy that With Honors is in there. I wasn't sure if you'd ever seen it. Oh, yeah, i definitely seen it, dude. Yeah. I'm a big Joe Pesci fan. I am, too, um, and it's one of those roles that are different for him. Yeah. You know, they, uh, he normally plays kind of like, the. I wouldn't say normally plays, but the roles he's known for are gangster movies. Yeah. I mean, Home Alone 2, man, that was just raw. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lost in New York. <laughs> Lost in New York. Hey, our president's in that. Brooklyn. Did you hear that? Yeah, uh, he was in it. Did you hear when uh, Canada air, uh, aired this past Christmas, they aired Home Alone 2, they cut out the Trump scene? Did they? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, it, it, it's not even like, a, like why is that a, a deal? Okay. I don't get it. Yeah, well... Because because nobody from other countries like Trump, man. I just can't believe they edited that part out, man. That was an essential plot twist. 
I don't think it was an essential <laughs> plot twist. It was nothing. The, if he wouldn't have ran into Trump, I don't think he would have got out of that hotel alive. <laughs> <laughs> well, because, you know, there's a video of what their prime minister is like Justin Trudeau or something like that. And there's a That's, video. Is that right? Justin is Trudeau. Yeah. Is that the guy from uh, <laughs> uh, Wonderlust? <laughs> What's his name, Carl? Oh, shit. His last name is Trudeau. Yeah, he'll look that up, but it, I'm pretty sure his name is Trudeau, too. And But there's a video that ended up going out of him and other world leaders at some like mass summit meeting or something like that, all making fun of Trump. There was a sketch on Saturday Night Live of them doing that, but yeah. it was like in the setting of a high school cafeteria, <laughs> and it was like they were like set up as cliques. Yeah. And he sat with like the weirdos <laughs> who Trump did or Trudeau. <laughs> Trump did, yeah. yeah, no, like Trudeau was in like the popular table, and uh, they invited the the German prime minister or whatever the f- fuck they call her, yeah, the German president. Oh, so maybe we got his first name wrong because that says that's the actor, right? Yeah, that's the actor. So Thoreau. what's what's that? Thoreau. Oh, Thoreau, not Thoreau. Trudeau. Okay. okay, Trudeau is the Canadian prime minister. Oh, the um, but anyway, <laughs> I just. <laughs> Funny, funny randomness. Uh, but today I thought since Tommy is, uh, you know, my guru when it comes to film and TV shows that today we would start with our top five shows of all time. All time? All time. Like not what we're currently watching? No, not what we're currently watching. I'm sure we're going to get into stuff that we're currently yeah. watching. But I, I would like to just stay, say a disclaimer here. I'm going to I'm going to end up thinking of like the first five TV shows that I can think of. Because I didn't come prepared with a list here, folks. No, not at all. I didn't tell him this was happening till right now. I'm I'm straight up freestyling <laughs> my top five here, and it's going to get crazy. It's going to get wild. Yeah, I really didn't prepare a list for this either, because I yeah. decided once we got to the studio I'm, that I was going to do that. I'm just going to go what pops in my head, and I'm just mm-hmm. going to think about how much, what shows did I like the most, like, just were was, like, obsessed with or, like, couldn't wait to watch the next episode. I'm just going to go from there. Yeah. But uh, we're both gonna we're both we're gonna alternate like we did like we normally do. So, what would you say is your well? It, we'll say no. We'll say there's no sequential order, but try to save your absolute favorite for the number one spot. So, what would you say for your first pick? Is my number one spot going last? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, I I couldn't do a top five without saying this show because I think. A lot of like the way TV decided to go after the show came out, like I, I, it would. You think it influenced everything? It it was very influential. It it redesigned the the TV drama and shit, and like gave it like more of like just more of a, um, you know, just like an obscene background to and and more raunchiness and whatnot. But yeah, I'm I'm gonna go with The Sopranos. Oh, The Sopranos? Yeah, I fucking love that show. I didn't watch it. Like, you know, I, I didn't have HBO when it was out because, I don't know, I just didn't because my parents didn't want it. But <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say because I was poor, but that's not true. Yeah, you were poor. Yeah, not, <laughs> I just didn't have HBO. Um, <laughs> streaming services were, were unavailable. I'm old. Right. Um so I remember watching like that was the first show I binge watched. That's why I'm bringing it up. It's the first show I, that I binge watched. But the way I binge watched it was like I had like the seasons on DVD. Right. I actually had my grandparents had one of the seasons on VHS. So I watched that. <laughs> yeah. and, I, and I didn't start watching it at season one right off the bat. I started watching it at season four and had. Uh, That's a, a weird way to start. I know. Show. I had a buddy of mine. um, like explain what happened up to that point. And then I watched season four and then I went back, watched one, two and three, like binge watch. And then after that, like, I think what was it? Six, six seasons, I think. Yeah. Cause they six spl- or seven, they split the last season in the two things. Yeah. Six or seven. But like, it was also the first show that like I would, I was meeting up with other people. friend, yeah. other people and, and like making like an, an occasion or event out of, out of, the newest episode airing. Like I would go over uh buddy's house and like, like just, we were geared up all week to watch the Sopranos. And I just feel that it was, uh I don't know. I mean, everything about it is just badass. Like it's like you, you wouldn't have so many shows. HBO would not be where it is in terms of oh. award winning shows. If it wasn't for the Sopranos. just TV shows in general, I agree yeah. with that for sure. Yeah. I, 
I loved The Sopranos. I actually I didn't watch them when they first came out either. I ended up buying them on DVD, and I started watching them actually. This was was I was in the Air Force when I started watching them, and I started watching them in Japan. I was in Japan I, on the base, and I had nothing to do, so I went to the BX on base, and I bought the first season of Sopranos, and then I ended up buying them all. But I hated how it ended, and after I saw the last episode, I literally gave all my box sets away for free. I was definitely yelling at the TV. I'm not going to lie. I was like, you know, I was like everybody else. I was just like, what the fuck? That's what they're going to do. Yeah. But like after, um, I don't know, like just recently, like they, there was like some article that they, uh, um, they, they were interviewing. I, what was his name? David Chase. What the, the guy, guy who the created creator. it. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember his name. He like explained, I Carl, can't, you find who created it. It was David Chase. It was David Chase. I think. Yeah. Okay. But like they were interviewing him and he kind of explained the, uh, the ending. And I, I just feel like, uh, you know, they, they whacked the viewer. The viewer got whacked at the end. I remember you telling me that to me, there's absolutely no way they can explain the episode well enough for me to be okay with it. I get it. But I still like, just looking back it all like in a series as a whole, I was obsessed with it. I'm not even Italian. I hate most of Italians. <laughs> really can't stand them. But that's right. Carl, I ho- Carl how do you feel about that? I'm upset. <laughs> like, Carl, Carl is Italian. Like we get it. You you eat spaghetti. We get it. <laughs> like we get it. We get it. We get it. The pasta's great. Like, you don't need a tattoo of the of your flag of you, your of your homeland because you like spaghetti. Yeah. But your grandparents were born in Steubenville, okay? <laughs> so, uh, uh, sorry, I am not racist against Italians. <laughs> I'm just joking. The other thing, the other thing I'll say about The Sopranos is: Have you gone back and tried to start watching it again recently? I've tried. Yeah, I, I just I ended up watching other stuff. You it actually, I mean? it actually doesn't hold up to me as well as I thought it would because I didn't realize when I was watching it the first time how silly some of it is. It's consi- it's actually labeled as like a dark comedy. Yeah, and it's it's I always thought of it as just this kind of hardcore gangster show, which it had those aspects, but it also just had some real silliness to it, and I was really thrown off by it when I went back to rewatch it. I I that's one of the things I enjoyed about it though. I I would uh, I was gonna say that they they are making a prequel uh, movie. From it, I that, heard that, but that was a long time ago. Oh, I heard that, and it never came out. Oh, it's being shot. To, uh, James Gandolfini's son it's is being, playing. It's being shot. Sorry, well, gangsters. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's being whacked. <laughs> uh, but uh, his son, James Gandolfini's son, he's playing. He's playing younger Tony so- Soprano in it. Yeah, and the Punisher guys in it. James Barenthal. Yeah, and and, I love that. Uh, yeah. The the villain from Ant Man is in it. I th- I'm going to say he's probably going to play Uncle Junior, I bet. Oh, yeah. That yeah, makes then, sense, um, yeah. Then the girl from The Departed, I can't remember her name either. She's she's in it. She's probably going to play his mom. Which girl from The Departed? The love interest of the two. The psychiatrist. Was that uh Vera Farmiga. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, look, Ray Liotta's in it. Yeah, Corey Stahl, that's who I was talking about. Well, I'll definitely watch the movie without a doubt. Joey Diaz is in it. Look. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And I think I think he might have been actually in the show as well. He may have, yeah. But, <laughs> but I, I think it's going to be pretty pretty freaking sick. It's yeah. going to be a good. It's, I'll, it's a I'll movie, it. not a show. It's a movie. But it's called the Many Saints of Newark. Yeah, I'll check it out for sure. Yeah, man, I think it's going to be sick. I uh, all right. So now I'll jump to my pick. Sure, and go ahead. I'm going to make it my. It's this is my clear cut number five. It has to be in my list because I think it is one of the best TV shows of all time. The reason it is all the way back at number five for me is because, and I've had, I just had this conversation with Kyle, but I've had a, the conversation with you multiple times. Well, I'm oh, sorry, Kyle. Oh, Kyle. Kyle. Oh, I thought he was referring to you. No, no, Kyle. Oh, uh, Kyle. Kyle. Yeah, yeah you Kyle. know Kyle. Yeah, I read his Facebook post. Yeah, he always has good Facebook posts. Smart dude, man. Yeah, he was just on the podcast. I haven't listened to it yet. I'm yeah. looking forward to it. It's a good one. He, um, but I was just talking to him about. Uh, on on there, and, but I've had this conversation with people multiple times. I have a hard time, even when the shows are good, uh, not taking breaks from shows where I think most of the people are kind of pieces of shit, like they're just not good people. 
You don't like that. I don't like that. Okay. I have to take breaks. Even though I think the show's amazing, like Shameless, I think the show's amazing. Does it make you feel bad about yourself? I do, it just no. It just makes it me have like I don't know, for lack of a better term, uh, term dark, dark feeling. Yeah. Like when everybody is bad in the show, I like I feel that on some weird level, and I I have to take breaks from it. I get that. So, but so the show I'm going to say is Breaking Bad. Mm. I think that is, and I'm sure this that might end up on your list somewhere too. I. It didn't come to mind just because I have so many shows running through my head right now. Yeah. I'm literally going to say what's when coming it's my your turn. Head. Yeah. Just what's at the top of my head. But I, I'm glad that you brought up Breaking Benjamin. And plus. Breaking Benjamin. <laughs> <laughs> I love Breaking Benjamin. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I do like that band. But that uh, that's not a TV show. <laughs> but Breaking Bad. I, I listen to him in my room when I'm sad. <laughs> I do love. Uh, I do love the show Breaking Bad. I think it's definitely one of the best shows ever made, if not the best, because it actually is good from start to finish. You can't get mad at the ending. The ending was good. But it's something I had to take breaks from because everybody in that show, besides Jesse, is a piece of shit. So it's it's hard for me to just like binge watch it, binge watch. I can binge watch like half a season, then I need to take a little break, then I can binge watch again. You don't think Jesse's a piece of shit? I think Jesse was the least piece of shit. Oh, I think yeah. don't get me wrong, he he was the original way that uh what's his name? What's the what's the lead? Walter. He's yeah, the, Walter. he's the main way Walter White ended up getting into the business, but even though he was an addict and he helped him do that, he had a good moral compass beyond that. He didn't he wasn't okay with all the murders that happened. He wasn't okay with all the shady shit that happened. Mm-hmm. He was just a guy that wanted to party and make money. Yeah. And when people got murdered and everything like that, he was upset about it. Brian Cranston, like, just carried that show, man. It, oh, he, just a phenomenal actor. His performance, like, episode in and episode out was just by far maybe one of the best characters ever to be on the yeah. small screen. And we should say Brian Cranston plays Walter White, the, the lead of it. Yeah. Um, great show. It's about a teacher that finds out he has cancer he's a science teacher and he decides that he has nothing to leave his family so he jumps into making and selling meth with uh jesse's help and but then he ends up becoming like a real kingpin and even after he finds out he doesn't have cancer anymore he continues to do it and he becomes just like this ruthless drug kingpin he is the one who knocks yeah, <laughs> he's the one who knows. Yeah, but Just, go ahead. Sorry, great show. But that's why that's why I I couldn't put it any higher than that. It had to be on the list because it's one of the best shows of all time, in my opinion. But I couldn't put it any higher than that because I couldn't just binge watch all of it straight through. Did you see the uh, the movie, the Jesse movie, the El Camino? It was it was all right. I liked. it. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was oh, good. I enjoyed it. It was it was really sad though. That's, like that's how that show was too, man. Yeah, I, if you really think about it, it really was. It was just sad. Like, I was sad the whole time watching it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I would like to see, because I, I can't remember exactly how the sh- the movie ends uh, for for whatever reason, because I watched it fairly recently, obviously, because it hasn't been out that long. But I, he doesn't die at the end, right? Who? Jesse. In the movie? Yeah. I don't think so, but I can't remember. Yeah, I hope he, I, I kind of, I would like to see more and more still come from, uh, Brad. I never watched that uh, Saul show, though. I watched the first season. And I couldn't get into it. I couldn't get into it either. People but love it's like, it. It's like a war. It gets nominated for awards every year. Pe- yeah, people love it. And I'm not saying I didn't like it. I just couldn't get into it. And I'm sure it got better and better as the seasons came out. And I think it's still on. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't watch it, unfortunately. And it kind that kind of upsets me. It kind of makes me understand why... Breaking Benjamin, kidding, <laughs> what is is probably not going to be uh, set out my mouth as one of my top five. But yeah. what I'm also going to do, I'm also going to try not to repeat anything you say. Like, I'm yeah. going to come up with five different but, ones. But, I mean, if there is one that you absolutely think you have to have on, then you should. Yeah, we'll see. We'll yeah. see what happens. All right. So The, but, challenge, the challenge continues. <laughs> Let's go with your, uh, your next show. Well, I got to go with something that I watched a lot when I was a kid. And, you know, just loved. I, I And it keeps on popping in my goddamn head, so I'm going to say it. But uh, Full House. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love that show, man. I never in a million years would have expected that. Do you watch the newer one, Fuller House? No, I'm not going there, dude. I'm not going there. 
<laughs> even I, though even though Jody Sweeten, I'm in love with her. Like when she was a kid, and well, I was a kid too. Right. But <laughs> but like you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I love her now, but I I just can't. I'm not. It's too cheesy. It's yeah. just not. I, I and, and I get Full House is cheesy too. But I loved it when I was a kid, and it's one of the few TV shows that made me cry watching it. It made you cry. One episode did. Yeah, I can't believe it's one. I can't believe it's one of the few. Uh, but I also, okay. I also <laughs> <laughs> listen. I cried during. Me and Thad talk about it all the time. We I, I cried during a lot of different shows and movies. If I'm hungover, I'll cry during a good commercial. Yeah, honestly, I you know yeah I. <laughs> But it is, it's one of the, I'll say it's probably the first TV show that made me cry. I just remember crying when uh, Uncle Jesse was, uh, he was deciding to move out because he got married to the, um, to the tuition stealer, Lori Laughlin. And he was, he was going into Michelle's room to say goodbye. She's going to do prison time, huh? She's already in prison. Oh shit. All right, go ahead. So he's going into Michelle's room to say goodbye. Yeah. And he like gives her. Who's Michelle? Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. Oh, the you mixture. got it, dude. Yeah, the mixture. Yeah, it had so many lines too. Like, cut it out, and <laughs> you got it, dude. That's it. And uh, uh, <laughs> uh, wake up, San Francisco. I did. I did love that show when I was growing up. I did. I can't say anything about that. So he he goes into her room to say bye, and he gives her like a framed picture of a pink rabbit that was his wallpaper in his room, like a pink bunny rabbit. Okay. And and she's like, Uncle Jesse, please don't go. And I just started bawling, dude. <laughs> this is it. Uncle Jesse moving out. I was completely just thrown back by it. It was such a plot twist to, to me. Like, what are they going to do? It's not a full house anymore. Uncle right. Jesse's gone. What, they got to they got to rename the show. Hey, well, what are they going to rename it to? Like lesser full house hey, well or? It, it, not just that i mean it really was like the it was a cool show based on the fact that these three friends could all live together and still kind of raise their families and do all these things that was a really cool aspect of the show it was it was completely different they they right. redefined friday night television <laughs> yeah tg well that was on tgif huh fuck yeah it was man it's so funny because today tgif i love that i love tgif but it's funny today though because today that would never be on a, a, a nighttime show I feel like it would be on like it, it would be on the Hallmark Channel the Hallmark Channel or like Sunday morning ABC Family <laughs> yeah what do you get when you get a morning talk show host a band guy who's an exterminator uh, and a hockey player who's a comedian living in one roof uh, <laughs> yeah. comedy I, gold I'm having a problem coming up with my next movie, my next show because I have two, but I, I definitely want to save those two for my top two. I feel like, uh, even though even though I only truly love one season of, actually the third season was good too. I think Kyle reminded me of how good the first season of True Detective was. The first. So you're saying just season one of True Detective is your next pick? Is that what you're saying? I'll actually say the show in general because the second season was absolute shit. But the, I didn't. I still watched it. Ah, but it was terrible. Yeah. But the third season was really good as well. It wasn't as good as the first, but it was it, really good. It was good, dude. So I'll say I'll say True Detective. Um, okay. One, obviously, I'm a huge Matthew McConaughey fan. Anybody that listens to this podcast has heard me say it multiple times. But I think him and Woody Harrelson were great combination in that show and just the way the show was wrote filmed everything it was phenomenal you're gonna see that new matthew mcconaughey uh movie coming out that i think it's a guy Ritchie film and uh, oh sons of sure. anarchy dudes in it yeah for sure that actually looks good yeah we're gonna get we're, i think one of the things i'm gonna bring up later in this is upcoming movies or movies that are currently in theaters that we think should be checked out Okay. Yeah. But yeah, I, I'm a huge Matthew McConaughey fan. I do think that I do think that True Detective has to be on my list. I think that first season was just so incredibly epic. It really was, man. It it was such it was such a great story. Mm-hmm. Um but like you had you were clueless most of the time. Yeah. Of what was going on. Yeah. And you watched it and that show it actually like more than other than maybe mm-hmm. Westworld made me have to like seriously pay attention to the storyline so intensively more than any other show yeah. other than Westworld. Cause there was just so much shit going on that I couldn't even like just follow. But like true detective, I was like, it, I felt like I was investigating 
the murder as well. Yeah, for sure. Without a doubt. Like they, yeah. it really puts you into the shoes of um, Woody Harrelson and Matthew McConaughey trying to figure this out and their struggles with it. And throughout, th- I love the whole like time jump thing too. I love yeah. that. I love that aspect of that show, the time jump. It is insane how bad the second season was, though. Like I said, I watched every episode, but it was really, really bad and hard to watch. It really was. I think they picked the wrong actors for that. Ah, maybe the wrong actors. I definitely think Colin Farrell was a bad choice, and I do like him in some things, but I think he was a bad choice. I don't think Vince Vaughn did bad in his role. But just this, the storyline was just kind of all over the place, too. It was it, it was not... It was not uh, written nearly as well as the other two seasons, but season three really came through. It was it was really good. Yeah, man, that Marshala Ali or what? Uh, I didn't mean to say his name wrong. It's Marshala Ali is one of the best actors uh, today. Today, yeah, I will agree with that. I loved him in Green Book, and he's going to be Blade. He's going to be the next Blade. That'll be sick. Yeah, yeah. He's a. I I love that guy. I never saw Moonlight. I didn't either. I wish I did, but anything else I've seen him in is just, I mean, I have I, I like him in anything. I'm sure Moonlight's an amazing movie, but when I read, like, the synopsis of it, it just seems like something I'm really not that interested in. Yeah, I, I, I don't need to see every movie. Yeah. All right, so what's your next choice? Oh, man. Oh, jeez. Um, I'm going to go with, uh, I got to, I'm going to keep, um, this is third. So I got two left after yeah, this. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to do my two comedies for one and two. So I'm going to go with, um. And I, there's so many things. Like, I'm. Can we give an honorable mention at yeah. the end, maybe? Okay, yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> shut up, Carl. <laughs> um, the newsroom. I probably stole that one for me, too. Mm. Yeah. The newsroom. Actually, I would have forgot about it, but now that you said it, you definitely stole it. It, it would have definitely been in my top five, especially, again, a, that one was good all the way through. And I was heartbroken when they said that it wasn't coming back. Mm hmm. But the first season of that is one of the best things on TV I've ever seen. Riveting. And the speech is probably, at the very, in the very first episode, is maybe the best speech of all time. When I need motivation, if I'm feeling down or, yeah. or if I'm just bored, I'll look up that speech right. and watch it. Mm-hmm. And it just moves me every time I freaking see it. And if anybody hasn't seen what we're talking about, you need to. Yeah, actually, Carl, I want you to go ahead and uh, Carl get on YouTube and try to find that uh, that I, speech. That would be that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, we'll we'll play that right now. And Aaron Sorkin is just he, he's a writing genius, he's unbelievable a genius writer. Pen. I, I literally was completely heartbroken when they said that was ending because that only got like what three or four seasons. I think, yeah, it was no more than four. I don't even think it was four. And I could have watched that forever. I also loved the concept behind it because it was talking about how the news should just give you the news, not their opinions. Right. And I think that's a real thing. I It, it is because I, I, I blame the news for making us some of the head cases that we are. Yeah. I think it breaks down people. And seeing something like that was just very – just the way the season went out, uh, went through progressing and whatnot, it was just very, it was just so moving. Yeah, no, that's that's not it, Carl. No, it's it's that one, the third one. It could, I think, the first one too. Maybe just like his, do a speech. Yeah, get try to get to where the speech actually happens. We'll tell you where. Keep going. Keep going. This podcast is brought to you by HBO. <laughs> yeah. If you don't like the newsroom, fuck you. <laughs> uh, th- this might be right around where, where we need to be, Carl. If you don't like watching movies that have been out on DVD this, for the past six months. She's the one months, that asked the question. You. So this is about, Diversity this is about why... Uh, the U.S. is the greatest country in the world. Freedom and freedom. So let's keep it that way. Well, the New York Jets. <laughs> no, I'm going to hold you to an answer on that. What makes America the greatest country in the world? Well, Lewis and Sharon said it. Diversity and opportunity and freedom and freedom. <coughs> 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 Huh. 
All right, now you can go back to the airport. He saw somebody hold up a sign that said it's not the best country, but it could be. Well, our Constitution is a masterpiece. James Madison was a genius. The Declaration of Independence is, for me, the single greatest piece of American writing. You don't look satisfied. One's a set of laws and the other's a declaration of war. I want a human moment from you. What about the people? Why is it not the greatest country, country in the world, Professor? That's my answer. You're saying yes. yes. Let's talk about a fine. Look, Sharon, the NEA is a loser. Yeah, it accounts for a penny out of a paycheck, but he gets to hit you with it anytime he wants. It doesn't cost money. It costs votes. It costs airtime and column inches. You know why people don't like liberals? Because they lose. If liberals are so fucking smart, how come they lose so goddamn always? Hey, and with a straight face, you're going to tell students that America is so star-spangled awesome that we're the only ones in the world who have freedom? Canada has freedom. Japan has freedom. The UK, France, Italy, Germany, Spain, Australia, Belgium has freedom. So, 207 sovereign states in the world, like 180 of them have freedom. All right, and yeah, you, uh, sorority girl, just in case you accidentally wander into a voting booth one day, there's some things you should know. One of them is, there's absolutely no evidence to support the statement that we're the greatest country in the world. We're seventh in literacy, 27th in math, 22nd in science, 49th in life expectancy, 178th in infant mortality, third in median household income, number four in labor force, and number four in exports. We lead the world in only three categories. Number of incarcerated citizens per capita, number of adults who believe angels are real, and defense spending, where we spend more than the next 26 countries combined, 25 of whom are allies. Now, none of this is the fault of a 20-year-old college student, but you nonetheless are, without a doubt, a member of the worst period, generation, period, ever, period. So when you ask what makes us the greatest country in the world, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yosemite? Sure used to be. We stood up for what was right. We fought for moral reasons. We passed laws, struck down laws for moral reasons. We waged wars on poverty, not poor people. We sacrificed. We cared about our neighbors. We put our money where our mouths were, and we never beat our chest. We built great big things, made ungodly technological advances, explored the universe, cured diseases, and we cultivated the world's greatest artists and the world's greatest economy. We reached for the stars, acted like men. We aspired to intelligence. We didn't belittle it. It didn't make us feel inferior. We didn't identify ourselves by who we voted for in the last election, and we didn't, we didn't scare so easy. all these things and do all these things because we were informed by great men, men who were revered. First step in solving any problem is recognizing there is one. America is not the greatest country in the world anymore. Enough? That, to me, is one of the best speeches in anything, cinema, whatever. Why isn't Aaron Sorkin writing our country's leaders' speeches? <laughs> yeah, why is he not? Because if, if that guy was uh, running for president, he would win. <laughs> why aren't there people like that on the news? Well, right yeah. Now? No, the, the like, news is a serious problem. Uh, uh, Carl, have you ever seen that before? Oh yeah, yeah. I I just I love that so much. I really do. I can't your get enough house, of it. Oh, uh, here? Yeah, you well, your old house. Oh yeah, yeah. It's so good. When I watched it, I couldn't stop. And when I got caught up to where I wasn't because I binge watched I think like the first season, maybe the first two. Yeah. But then like I then I was to the point where I was waiting for it to come out each week mm -hmm. and I was so anxious as soon 
as the last episode episode ended. Yeah, I completely agree. And that's why I'm putting it on in my top five. And what's crazy is I don't watch the news like that, but I watched a show. I, I never watched it beforehand because I was like, I don't even like watching the news. Why would I enjoy this? Right. That's what I thought. I thought it was going to be like someone that's a news junkie is going to want to watch. Yeah. But no, it's incredible. Everybody should watch it. Everybody should realize that the show they end up doing, the new show they end up doing in the show should be how the news is done. Yeah. Even though they have some big fuck ups. I'm pissed I said Full House now because I got like so many other fucking shows. You want to replace Full House? I'm not going to do it now. I'm going to wait. You can replace one right now. No, I'm going to wait. I can't think of one right now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I got so many. I can, I'm like, I'm probably skipping so many good ones too. Yeah. Like, this, uh, so then my, me off. my next one, hey, you know, you never know. We may do it. We may do shows again, but my next one, I think I'm going to have to put on there because it was this show. I put off watching forever. And then when I find, cause I was like, ah, I don't think it's going to be that cool. It's supposed to be in these olden times and blah, 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 this and that. And then when I finally decided to watch it, I watched the first season, which is 10 one hour episodes in one day. Damn. And then it was the show I was the most addicted to. It was the show that I literally was getting together with multiple other friends to watch did hate how it ended. I don't hate it as much as most people, but it definitely did not end well. But Game of Thrones. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you said it because I was like, oh, I'm going to have to say that. Yeah, I had to put it on my list. I absolutely had to because it was one of the shows I was definitely the most addicted to, even though they did definitely screw up the end. They probably screwed up the end more than Sopranos. They probably screwed up the end more than a lot of shows, but the rest of the show was actually so good that if I had all the seasons on Blu-ray... Not only would I not have given them away for free, but I would not have even have sold them. I would have just maybe given away the last season. But it was so good. And when you talk about a show giving you anxiety because you can't wait to see more, wow! The, the last season still did that to everybody. Mm-hmm. Even though it's even though you didn't like the way each episode ended, you still were fucking waiting. Yeah. To see the next one, and still nobody could quit talking about it. It yeah. was still the most talked about thing ever. It's gonna go down as one of the best shows ever. Yeah. Ever. It's the the last season is going to be a hit on it. I don't dislike it as much as other people do, but I do dislike it. Uh just cuz I don't think they wrapped up things well. I don't think they wrapped up some some of the characters well. Like Jon Snow was supposed to be just the guy and they just he basically did nothing in the end. I think what they did was they I think I think there was just too many characters to follow. And there just was not. Yeah, but the, you know what? They had no problem killing off characters. Honestly, the person I yeah. put the most blame on for that show ending so poorly, and people like to blame the writers of the show, but I have to blame, or the directors of the show, whatever they are, but I have to blame, <laughs> I have to blame the actual writer of the books because yeah. they he had so much time to finish the last book or the last two books, but really just the last book. And he did not, he had years to do it and he didn't finish it. And these guys who were just rewriting the story to make it fit into the show had nothing to go off of. And they were probably like, we don't know what to do. Yeah. Kudos to them, by the way. Right. Because the season before that, they also had to do that with, and it was good. Mm -hmm. And then I think by the time the second one, they're like, man, we just did everything we could with that. Here's why. Here's why the 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 last season the way it was. They ran out of money. They over budgeted. And oh really? They were trying to crunch too much content into like they, like they just. I, I think it was. I think it was budget, and I think it was just time. Like I think like they definitely know, needed a, another full season, not a short season, like, if not two seasons. That show. What does it say? The sixth season budget was over ten million per episode for a season total of over one hundred million and a series record. That's crazy. So it's like that because they they treated the whole series like they were shooting a movie. And it's one of the it's one of the few shows that was shot more like a movie than than like a a TV show. Oh, without and, a doubt. And, and it was expensive to do. Not only that, the CGI was incredible at it because most of the time when you have CGIs with like dragons and stuff like that, it looks really piss poor, especially for TV. And in this one, it was not piss poor. The dragons looked amazing. The White Walkers looked amazing. Everything looked amazing. I think the whole staff too was just getting like exhausted. Like they they, they were so separated from their lives since starting doing this show. And I'm talking like the crew. 
creators, writers, everybody. Yeah. They were so consumed in it. They like they were getting tired. They were just tired. Yeah. They worn themselves out. I, I I think more so the creators of the show, not the books. The creators of the show were probably worn out, especially after the season that they already did that was really good. The previous the previous to the last season. Uh, they had to do that one all on their own without the book. And I think they put a lot of time into that, and they were probably burnt out after that. And those guys ended up screwing up their whole careers anyway, so who cares? They did? Yeah, well, they originally they were leaving the show to go do something with, I think, Marvel or Disney. It was Star Wars. Oh, or, Star Wars. Yeah. They didn't end up doing that. They got oh, fired from that. Really? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Well, that prequel's coming out, though. It's going to be about the Targaryens. I wonder. I, I don't know if the I don't know if the same people have anything to do with it, but I would say they. I would. bet you that that well, if those last seasons, if that last season cost as much as it did, the Targaryens is going to cost even more because yeah. that's going to have dragons everywhere. Yeah, well, that makes more room that for CGI though. But as I say, my suspicion is that will be on air sometime. In, oh, so the new the the pre house or the, the pre house. The prequel is going to be aired sometime in 2022, it looks like. House That's of the Dragons. House of the Dragons. Well, House good. of the Dragon. Yeah, it's going to be good. All right, so what's your next one, Tom? Okay. <clears throat> well, I'm going to go with... Uh, I, I have to go with it because it's just so much... It's so a part of who I am as a person. It's so much a part of who I am at, like in my sense of humor. Uh, but I'm going to go with Saturday Night Live as my next show. You know what? Show. I'm actually glad you said that. I, w- I, I didn't think that would be on your list, but I am glad that it is. Because you do make sure you watch every episode of that. Every episode. Dude. And it's been on forever. I think, I think the only sh- I think the only show that is longer running is actually Monday Night Raw. Or that has at least aired more episodes. Really? Yeah, Monday Night Raw has a new episode every single Monday, every single week. I, th- I think before, um, or I think like I think maybe like the only, I think it's the longest running show, like other than maybe like Monday Night Football because they count that as a show, yeah, or broadcast, I guess. Yeah, number of episodes is eight hundred sixty-one. Eighty-one. Eight hundred eighty-one. Sorry, the uh, Brian, look up. Look up how many episodes Raw has had, because I, I do think Monday Night Raw is actually the, like the longest or most episodes or something like that. Um, uh, what but terrible, it, what a terrible name for a for a TV show. What Monday Raw? Night- <laughs> oh baby, I like it Raw. Right, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> they uh, but that is a great show. They've done sketch comedy forever. A lot of people make their careers off it. Yeah, number of episodes one thousand three hundred and eighty nine. That's crazy. It's phenomenal. And it's wrestling. <laughs> so many episodes. That's that's how big 20, wrestling is. 27, 27 seasons. 27 seasons. That's the one thing about Saturday Night Live, like they take a lot of breaks throughout the season. Yeah. And like it only runs from uh September to May. Look at this. It says Raw has broadcast live from 208 different arenas in 171 cities. Damn. That's crazy. But yeah, Saturday Night Live, I mean it it's just it's where it's where the big boys come to play in in terms of um improv comedy I or think, not improv sketch comedy i think it's where young comedians get their start is what i think it is and that's not always the case too cuz there's been people that have gotten on that show later like they they weren't really that young it just it's it's well, i'm saying in their career they were up and yeah, coming okay yeah but it, and it's always it's always changed or redefined the way comedic actors were going to be p- portrayed. They were always in the forefront yeah. of doing stuff like that. And they just, they, they've, they've had so many different like legendary writers mm-hmm. in there that weren't even like a part of the cast. It's just, it, it's a lot of people say that it like, Oh, it's not as funny as it used to be. It's not as funny as it used to be. People have been saying that for 20 years now. In some ways I agree with that though. I don't agree with it completely because if I laugh, if it makes me laugh when I'm watching it, I don't even care if it just makes me laugh once during the whole goddamn episode right uh, uh that I'm watching it's still funny to me yeah and, and it's it's very satirical it obviously still does very well <laughs> yeah I love it I, I I can't say anything bad about it I I don't care they've had some shitty seasons and some shitty casts but yeah it is what it is I mean I, I do I do I do think it's really good I don't watch it live but I always like seeing the clips I loved celebrity jeopardy that's one of my favorite things ever 
what I what I can't imagine, I can't I just can't even fathom it is life without it. Like yeah. when it actually ends. Yeah. Because to me like for me, I, I've never I, I've been alive the whole time it's been on. And when they do decide to actually end it, and I don't know when that's gonna be. And I don't think anybody nobody can guess it. Yeah. Did you uh so that that's your number two. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh real quick, Carl, any chance I could get you to grab me a beer? The um so my number two is actually going to be and it this I'd say this one is kind of a coin flip between my number one and number two, but this is the order I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna go friends for my number two. I knew you were gonna say friends at some point. Yeah. The, I'm good, uh, I just poured myself a beer. Carl. Actually, why do I need a beer? Actually, Carl, can you hand me the stone in there? I don't think this is quite cold enough yet. Carl's getting fired. <laughs> but they, um, but Friends to me is the best sitcom that was ever made. I know a lot of people like to compare the two of that and Seinfeld. I think Friends is weirdly more realistic because I don't think anybody in their right mind is that good of friends with a character like Kramer. <laughs> like legitimately if your neighbor was Kramer would he have a key to your apartment Kramer was based off of a guy that uh, Larry David knew I, I I know that that whole thing was off of Larry David but would you would he have a key what's that oh yeah Curb comes back on but would he have a key to your apartment if he was your neighbor did Kramer have a key I thought he yes. just opened the door no he also had a key oh. I don't care I still wouldn't even let him in my apartment like that all the time I'd be like dude Get the fuck out of my apartment. I wouldn't let Joey in my house. Oh, I would for sure let Joey in my house. <laughs> How would you not let Joey in your house? Just kidding. He's He'd not, eat all the food. He would eat all the food, but he's nowhere near as crazy and eccentric and just bananas. Like, comes in and his whole body is gyrating as soon as he comes through the door. He's like, oh my God, we can't get the soup. <laughs> like, what, what, get away from me. Best, <laughs> one of the best scenes for me uh, from Friends the entire series was the whole them... Um, Moving the couch upstairs, the whole pivot. Pivot. Scene. Pivot. Pivot. <laughs> pivot. <laughs> to I me, loved I, it. Uh, I watched that show. I started watching that show well after it, hit, it had been aired. I, I did watch it before it finished, but I was probably like year six or year seven. And then I just blew through it. it to me, it is one of the best shows of showing a group of friends going through their life that has been made. I really do think that Trials, Tribulations, Comedy... All of it, and I think, I think uh, the character Chandler is one of the best characters Me in too. TV history. Yeah, that was, he was my favorite on that. Yeah, for sure, mine too. That show was so much a part of pop culture, probably more than any other show that people could really say. Like even Saturday Night Live, um, like just I, like it, anything that was popular, especially during like the early years of of the show. I mean, like. Even like freaking Rachel's haircut, yeah, was like the biggest haircut or hairstyle. Yeah, whatever hairstyle she had, it would, it would, yeah. it would switch to it. The Rachel, yeah, and I, I don't know. I just I think it was an iconic show. I think it showed that 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 time frame in people's lives, those that age time frame in people's lives, better than than any show I'd ever seen. And it's a lot more adult than I thought it was when I watched it for the first right. time. Yeah. I didn't think it was going to be that adult. I mean, it is very adult. There's a lot of sex talk and everything else. Um, but to me, that's just, that is that is my number two. I'm actually pissed right now because it's not on Netflix anymore. It's not? No. They took it off? It's they off already? It's going to be on that new uh, oh. HBO Max. Oh, HBO Max? Yeah, there's going to be an HBO Max, and it's going to be on that. And I'm pissed because it was the show I would put on like in my bedroom when I was ready to go to sleep because I've seen it so many times that I've seen it so many times, but I always enjoy watching it that I didn't have to be staring at the screen in order to watch a show because I knew it. So I could like kind of just relax and, and drowned off. What, um, what about, uh, it's not going to be on, um, what it's the NBC streaming service is coming out. Peacock. No, it's not it, gonna be on that. No, it's gonna be on HBO Max. Look that up, uh, Carl. It's a reunion special. Oh no, but I think the actual show—that's where it's going because it's not on Netflix anymore. Well, I just put like, where is Netflix or where is Friends going to air? 
That'll that'll bring me to my next pick. Well, hold on. I don't want you. Yeah, I don't want you to get anything. to number one because I'm actually going to take a piss break before we do our number ones. I'm on. Wait, I'm on number one already. Yeah. Oh shit. Well, can I? When can I say my al- my alternate? Right after. Uh, we'll do it before the. We'll, no. Let, Here. What? Can I just say my alternate right now? I won't even talk about it that much. I'm going to change Full House to South Park because I have always watched South Park my entire life and it. The show just gets me. I, I I like making like I like I like to make fun of people. Okay. Yeah. I love making fun of people. Yeah, it's like your favorite thing to do. I love making fun of people. You and Carl have the most the the most hilarious insult relationship that there has ever been. Yep. <laughs> and Carl and Tommy were not only friends all through their lives, but they were also college roommates. So that's the kind of relationship they have. Oh, shit. Yeah. So go ahead. Says it's coming to Warner. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. All right, we'll figure that out. We'll figure that out. But so yeah, so just South Park. Uh, I don't know. Um, I like making fun of myself. I just like to laugh. I, I don't. I, I like to laugh at other people's expense, and I like to laugh at my my own expense. And South Park doesn't have any boundaries, and that's what I like about it. It's yeah. funny as shit, and I know it's very immature most of the time, but I still watch it. I still record all the new episodes yeah. and watch it the the night it comes out. And I've been doing it since I, I like it. I I've I saw the first episodes back when it was on a talk show, when it was like actually coming out. Like that's a, like well, and, and you guys watched it with me. Well, we we initially really watched it in Jared Grimm's parents' basement because yeah, somehow he had the VHSs that's of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, we, it was viral video before viral video existed. Yeah. Like, Jesus first Santa. Yeah, and, well, he had a bunch of episodes though. And when it comes, when it when it, when push comes to shove, it's going to surpass the Simpsons as as the as the most successful oh, animated sure. series ever. Well, because Simpsons is also letting this new uh, this new uh, cancel culture affect the Simpsons. South Park is never going to let that happen. No, like they, they Abu is no more on Simpsons. Yeah, they aren't going to back down. Yeah, but Simpsons, they literally, I just saw an article today, Abu. The Quickie Mart owner is gone. They're not doing it anymore. Are you serious? Swear to God. Yeah. All right. But so we're going to hit our last me and Tommy's number ones right after I take a piss break. And for all of you possible future advertisers, we do piss ads. Oh, that's a brilliant time for for ads. (laughs) Piss ads. And we're back. (laughs) I wasn't expecting that to be Tommy's intro back. He asked if we could do it, but we are back from the piss break. And Tommy, we're at your number one. (laughs) Number one pick for Tommy Two Phones. It has to be, and it's my friends, basically, is The Office. Okay. I kind of expected that to be one of yours. I have to go with it. Uh, I don't know. It's, It's something that it's more than a comedy to me. It, I mean, it's I'm, even like the relationship between Dwight and uh, Jim and I mean, throw and of course, Michael in there. I mean, it's just it's fucking hilarious. I do think Dwight and Jim to me were almost more important characters than Michael in the show. I, I, I agree. Yeah. And but it's it it gets deeper than what most people. Oh, it definitely does. Realize. It's and, a really silly comedy that definitely has deep moments yeah, without a doubt. It, it's it. I can't put any other type of show on its level for me. Okay. I, I just I it's my favorite show. Yeah. I'm 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 a comedian by heart. I, I love comedies mm-hmm. and uh especially with T V shows. Like I'd rather watch the thirty minute uh comedy than, than a drama. Like that's why I'm behind on all these 'cause I there there just seems to be like what, like like Fifty million fucking dramas you can watch now on, yeah. on so many different streaming That's services, the biggest thing, and cable there, and shit. There's so many shows, period, because there are so many different streaming services. Like, it's definitely the time to try to become an actor. Yeah, all these people are like, "Oh, you watch this show, you watch this show, you watch." This show. I'm like, yeah. "No, I haven't had. That. How do you have the time? I, I'm like always watching TV, and I'm like can't stay caught up in all the good shit that's out, but." When it comes to thirty minute TV shows, I watch. I watch it if they're good. I watch them. Like Superstore, Superstore, Good <laughs> yeah. Place, Big Bang Theory when it was on. Yeah, 
uh, and and the office is is my number one there. Nice, it, that's I, awesome. It, it 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 holds close to my heart. I think that's a good number one. I think I feel like the probably the three most popular half hour shows in in history almost are actually Friends, Seinfeld, and The Office. Yeah, I can agree with that. I uh, really 30, do. Thirty Rock was really successful, but I don't think it hit the. I no. don't think it hit the pop culture icon the same way that those shows did. Yeah. And, and Frasier was also really uh, popular, and so is every everybody loves Raymond. But it, they they're not, on the, not same, on the same they're not level. on the same caliber. I dude. hated Frasier to yeah. be honest. My number one was gonna be Knott's Landing, but um, mm. I never saw it. I was gonna say that is not <laughs> true. <laughs> I just remember like I I don't know if it was like it, there's one of those shows that like the beginning music is just it was it, it was really cool and it was just like. Bah, 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 bah. I feel like it was Knott's Landing. I don't it, know. My mom used to watch Knott's Landing. <laughs> That's the reason I thought of it. Twin Peaks. Uh, Twin, Twin Peaks. Peaks. Get actually, the fuck out of here, Carl. <laughs> actually, you know what's funny is Kyle brought up Twin Peaks in the episode we talked about. He brought it up as one of the things you must see because he said... They did a remake, too, I think. Well, he said the way they did... Uh, the way they did Twin Peaks actually, if you really look back on it, affected every show that's ever been filmed since. Um, which I have to go back and watch it to find out, but it does lead into a perfect segue <laughs> into my number one because my number one did a an episode where they had all the Twin Peaks actors come on and they were part of this little community and this and that, but my number one is going to be the TV show Psych. I fucking knew it. <laughs> I fucking kn- No. <laughs> I don't have anything to say about Psych. Have you really watched it as much as the rest of us did? No. I, I I wish I have. I like that. I like the people that are in it. They are they are hour log episodes at half hour. They're, oh yeah, yeah. And it is actually uh, Carl. Check that out. I think their uh, I think their seasons are only twelve to sixteen episodes. I just click on one season, see how long the episode. And that, will. Now I'm just I'm thinking of so many more shows right now. But to me, Psych is actually the best comedic show of all time. Part of that for me might be because I also like cop shows and it's a kind of a comedic cop show. Okay. But so the basis behind the show is, uh, well, I'm not gonna be able to think of his name all of a sudden. Psych is 44 minutes. So, so with commercials, it's an hour long. The, uh, the James Rode is the lead. Uh, I would say, well, I would say him and Dulé Hill are the two leads. Uh, James Rode in the show, he pretends to be a psychic uh, that can solve crimes. But really what he is, he's, he has identic memory. And his dad was a cop slash detective. And his dad realized he had identic memory. So he taught him to really hone that skill and be super aware. So whenever he walks into any room, he's very aware of every single thing going on. And then he can recall it just like nothing because he has identic memory. Uh, but so he fools the police department to thinking he's a psychic and he ends up being a consultant on their cases all the time and he solves them all the time. But one of the things that helps him focus is being very, very silly. And it is hilarious. I truly believe everybody, if you've never seen this show you have to go back and watch it, especially if you grew up in the 80s and 90s, because a lot of times they will reference those things and they just they just I, I wish I could describe it fully. It is just the funniest show I've ever seen and the most relatable show I've ever seen. And it's got that kind of we got this case to solve this episode. We got this case to solve this episode. And sometimes they have two or three episodes that lock in together. And they play off other things. Like they have an episode where they kind of played off of Hangover. Like they all wake up in the morning and they can't remember what nice. happened. And it, that's one actually one of the best episodes by far. But I, not enough people have seen it. It shocks me. But it has a huge following. The reason I know it has a huge following. The reason I know it has a huge following is because since they canceled the show, which I'm not even sure it got canceled. I think that everybody just said, okay, we're done doing this. They're, I, also, their fans are called psychos. <laughs> it's like a cult classic. Yeah, I, that's, I see it as a cult classic. Yeah, but they they are about to release the second movie since the canceling of the show here in March. 
There's gonna so they've already done one movie since they're gonna do another movie. Uh, well, they've already filmed it. It's just gonna be edited and released uh, in what you would call it. It's gonna be on that new Peacock too. Actually, is it? Yeah, but oh. I can't. I can't wait. Uh, it's my favorite show of all time. The guy who used to help me with this all the time, Gabe. It's his favorite show of all time. I just tell me you're actually you're leaving with those DVDs because you have to really watch this show. I probably like it. I, I I've seen episodes with with either you or Justin, and and I've always like I I you always paid attention. Episodes. Yeah, I always enjoyed them. Yeah, they have like they have like the higher storylines that go through the whole thing, but there's a different case every episode. But there's a storyline in the background that goes through the whole thing. Yeah. And the crazy thing about that show to me was it literally got better with every episode, even right up till it ended. The very first pilot episode was very entertaining, had some funny moments, but it was like, okay, it's all right. But for some reason, I stuck with it. And literally every single episode, it got better and better and better. Can we do uh, Can we do two honorable mentions? Just two. We don't have to talk about them a lot. No. I just want to list them. I mean, we can talk about them as much as we want. We do whatever the fuck we want on this podcast, bro. Fuck right. <laughs> yeah. All right, fine. Here's my fucking two honorable mentions, motherfuckers. <laughs> Listen up. By the way, I would also like to really encourage people, who, anytime uh, Dave shares these podcasts on social media, if you would like to share your top fives in the comments, please do. I, we, we're, we're open to hearing. Yeah. That's like a, a lot of stuff that we probably forgot. Yeah, that's a great call. Because we but, don't have the best memories. We're also drinking. And on, on Facebook, like I said, I, I'm making this list up as I go. Facebook or Instagram. The Facebook is just my Facebook, David James Hammer. And the Instagram is Gathering of Fools. And my email for this is gatheringoffools at gmail.com. Definitely share anything that you feel like you want to share, whether it be retorting our top five and or giving me ideas of something you'd like to hear some of us talk about. Anyway, Tommy, your honorable mentions. Hashtag, what's your top five? My two honorable mentions are Mr. Robot and Veronica Mars. Oh, okay. One, uh, Mr. Robot, I did not get as into. I did watch the first season. It was good. I just couldn't get into it, get into it. This final season was amazing. It just was fucking amazing. Well, man, it's actually got a ninety four percent on Rotten Tomatoes. That's crazy. It the way the way everything came to fruition in this last season was just how many seasons I don't know, was I, that? I think five. I think five. I, I kind of like sometimes. I always get upset. Three. Three. Three? <laughs> Shut the fuck up. What? <laughs> well, I felt like a lifetime. I'll tell you that. Carl has proved us wrong. It is three. <laughs> Damn. But I do like sometimes when they do cut them off because sometimes when you four. go too long, Look, you fuck them up. Four. It was four. He's going to pull up IMDb. It we'll just figure said out for season sure. four, episode 11, exit. That was the name of the last episode. Four. Okay, four. Still four. So That's better than three when you said five. True. I think I said six, too. <laughs> I think I said five or six. Um, but uh, I don't know. This like Every time I watch an episode of this, I, I feel like I'm in a, I'm in a different world. Yeah. Like it, it makes me feel like I'm in a different world, different dimension. It just, it was just, I don't know. It was just something else. And then Veronica Mars, I'm not, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know where to go with that. <laughs> well, actually I'll, I'll, I'll go right into Veronica Mars. I will actually, even though you claimed it as one of your two honorable mentions, I'm going to claim it as one of my honorable mentions. Okay. All right. Cause Veronica Mars like is the shit. I loved everything about Veronica Mars. It is definitely one of my guilty pleasures. Um, Carl knows all about Veronica Mars. Kristen Bell is like all of my high school crushes wrapped, wrapped into, into one. one. Yeah. yeah. I can see that. I The they, good place. Veronica Mars got <laughs> Veronica Mars got canceled initially after what, three or four seasons? Three seasons. And then they did a movie. The movie was phenomenal. Yeah. I loved the movie as well. And then they did come back and Hulu did a, an extra season of the show and it was also Phenomenal. How many how many broadcasts can say that they were able to go on all the different formats like that? Not and and not in syndication. Yeah. Like they went from network, because whatever they were on CWWB, whatever the fuck it was. Yeah. And then um a movie that was yeah. out in theaters. And it right? was awesome. It was out in theaters, yeah. right? Yeah, it yeah. was in theaters. Yeah. Yeah, crowdfunded actually. Yeah. We should bring that up. Yeah. It was completely one hundred percent crowdfunded. And then they made a season on Hulu. Yeah. 
a streaming service. And like it, that's that's amazing in itself. That's and, a feat. And actually, the even though I did enjoy the season, the worst the worst thing in the whole the whole build up of Veronica Mars was the third season. And the only reason I think the third season was the worst part was because they knew they were getting canceled and it didn't they didn't get to like wrap things up the way they would have liked to. And then the movie came out, it was phenomenal. The show on Hulu was phenomenal. I I'm just praying and Carl, maybe you can look this up. Is there plans for another season? Because it is phenomenal. It is it is kind of corny in a way, but it is just incredibly entertaining. They did such a good job with the writing and everything else. It was just phenomenal. So now I figure, I guess I got to go. Hold on, what does it say? Although Hulu has yet to officially renew Veronica Mars for a fifth season, Thomas says there have been some very preliminary discussions. They have checked mine and Kristen's availability moving forward. So hopefully we get it. Hopefully we get it. Because it, it's awesome. I I just I can't wait. I actually I actually have the first season of Veronica Mars out there on the uh the infamous uh Blu ray shelf. Although it's not in Blu ray because they don't have it in Blu ray. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> it actually took me a while to even find the goddamn first season. I had to get it from uh that place up in Robinson that sells all the used things. I can't remember what it's called. Carl, what's your favorite T V show? <laughs> <laughs> Carl doesn't want to be put on the spot. <laughs> it's probably some science shit. Yeah, I guarantee it. It's like ancient aliens. <laughs> the weird fuck. All right, what was your other honorable mention? Dave? So my other honorable mention, I'm going to have to think about this. Hmm. Actually, my other honorable mention is not going to be an actual show. It's going to be a mini series, but it was very long. It had a ton of episodes. And it's going to be uh, Shogun. Shogun? Yeah. Uh, look that up, Carl, so I can give people some <laughs> accurate information on it. Shogun miniseries. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, I, I know where this is coming from. Yeah, I'm trying to see. So it was it was it was in 1980, actually. So it's it's very old. I watched it for the first time with my. What's that? Oh yeah, and it was a mini series. It wasn't. It wasn't going to be multiple seasons. It was never supposed to be. It is actually based off of a book by uh, I want. I never know how to say his name right, but it's like James Clavell, and he had a. Oh whole... yeah, Jim Caviezel. Like Jesus. <laughs> no, not him. Oh, okay. <laughs> he. Uh, where do you see the name of the? Same name by James Clavell. James Clavell. He uh, he actually did a series of books called the Asian Saga. Taipan was made into a movie. I think it was terrible. It had the number two bartender from Cocktail. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, the movie with Tom Cruise. He's the guy yeah. that like trained him. Uh, he was the lead. I think it was probably terrible, but the book was great. I have read two of the books now, but the sh- the mini series. Actually, every time I watch the mini series, so the mini series, what it's based on is an English sailor uh, sails to Japan. They get shipwrecked. Him and his crew are basically captured by the Japanese samurai. Okay. And they, this guy ends up being favored by the main samurai from his area. And they end up teaching him Japanese and all this thing. I like the show so much that every, I have it again on DVD out there. And every time I go back and watch it, I can semi speak Japanese afterwards. What? Yeah. Because they teach, Domo. they they teach him, uh, they teach him. <laughs> I think it's just a thing. They you. teach him uh, Japanese in the show, so you kind of like between the teachings and then them just talking, you kind of pick up on it some. Every time you'll know when I watch it the next time because I will speak Japanese to you guys. I guarantee it. I do it every time, then I forget it. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> but one thing I always remember is wakarimas, wakarimasen. Because those are like the first words he really learns. And now I can't even remember what they are. Um, but it's an amazing show. He goes through it. He ends up this uh, English sailor. He might even be Spanish. I can't remember. But he's not Japanese. He ends up becoming a samurai. And it is just some of the the best TV I've ever seen, without a doubt. What's funny is, is like uh, he was in Cocktail with Tom Cruise. And he was a samurai. No, that was Taipan. What? The guy from Taipan was the guy that was in Cocktail. Oh, okay. He was not in this. 
Well, then you know Tom Cruise ended up being the last samurai. Well, you know the guy from uh, you know the guy from he was not the last samurai. That the that movie is called the Last Samurai, but the Last Samurai was the guy that taught him the samurai ways. Oh, really? In the movie, that's who they're actually. I saying. never saw it. You never saw Last Samurai? No. Are you out of your fucking mind? I have yeah, that on I Blu-ray am. out there. You're taking that for sure. That is yeah. a phenomenal movie. I remember I started watching it. I just it's a movie I didn't finish. You're out of your that. fucking mind. There's tons of movies that I just like. That is watch. so good. That is by far one of my favorite Tom Cruise movies. Really? Leaps and bounds. Yeah, I gotta see it. But it, it, that's the confusion that everybody always has. They're like, how can Tom Cruise be the last samurai? He's not even Jack. He he wasn't. The last samurai is the guy that taught him the samurai ways. That's wow. the last samurai. Um, but. But yeah, everybody, if you get the chance, you should check out Shogun. I don't know if it's available free on any of the streaming services, um, but it is one of the best things that has definitely ever been aired on TV. The books are also really good. I actually have Gaijin from the Asian Saga that I'm about to read here soon, but it is, it's it's unbelievable. It's uh, it's a it's a masterpiece without a doubt. Yeah, interesting pick. I I I wasn't expecting that at all. Honestly, I don't know why it popped in my head because I I if you told me that I was going to end up putting that on this list, I never I never would have told you that that was going to be there. I yeah. just it popped in my head, and I was like, actually, that's definitely one of my favorites. I've watched it. It's a mini series. I've probably watched it four or five times. I almost said the Care Bears TV show, the cartoon. <laughs> I thought about GI Joe. Honest yeah. to God, He Man, <laughs> Turtles, <laughs> but Care Bears Man. Oh, that, I mean, that shit was good. I did love the movies too. I, yeah. Lionheart was my favorite Care Bear, and oh, he was man. only in the movies. Dude, that one movie when they came out with the different animals, that, that was... <laughs> yeah, it was groundbreaking. Yeah, groundbreaking, <laughs> say the least. Lionheart. Uh, I love Fuck that yeah, movie. Dude. I'm that. getting a fucking Lionheart tattoo. <laughs> you know what's hilarious is I actually, I always try to get things for my nieces and nephews that are from my childhood because, I, because I think those are better. So I, I bought a Lionheart stuffed animal for uh for ruby and then all of a sudden i found out people have been trying to find that they can't find it so i bought it at walmart for like six bucks it's worth like a hundred dollars what <laughs> yeah. damn yeah. look at him look at lionheart he's what, the man what was the thing they used to do when they used to stick their tummies out and shoot the rainbows what, like depending what? on what their thing was like grumpy if he shot it out it would make the people grumpy yeah if but it what, was what was the thing they said they were like care bears oh, i can't remember care bears assemble care, care bears shoot stomach stuff <laughs> <laughs> But I thought about doing G.I. Joe's because not only did I love watching the G.I. Joe cartoon and I love that they had a good, healthy message for kids afterwards. You know, remember, uh, the more you know. <laughs> but uh, but it it made this huge thing in toys. It became such a big thing in toys. I mean, who here didn't have G.I. Joe's? We all had G.I. Joe's, right? The ones that you could unscrew the back, take them apart. And I don't know if anybody else did this, but I used to make my own G.I. Joe's. I would take legs from this one, arms from this one. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, that is our top five this week. Uh, but I did want to get into some recent shows. Uh, one thing I've been raving about is Messiah. I know you started it. I, I have uh, the last episode left. No, oh, that's it? Yeah. Do you love it? Yeah. yeah. I think it's phenomenal. Yeah, it's great. I think it's one of the better things that I've seen on TV in a while. And I'm glad that they made the guy that looks like Jesus that is the Messiah. They actually made him correct. He does have more brown skin than white skin. He's not like what you see in all your churches on the pictures. Damn. <laughs> but uh, in this show, he is. Uh, this guy comes out of nowhere, and he some miracles start happening around him, or he's performing them, and they're trying to decide whether he's faking all of it or whether he's trying to start a new terrorist cell because anything good has to be bad, right? <laughs> um, uh, but it's very intriguing. It the, People like to say it has a homeland feel. I think the only homeland thing is it does kind involve... Does, yeah. I think the only thing it is is it does have the CIA, it does have the FBI, but there was never anybody performing miracles in homeland. Yeah, and I... I don't know. It, it's it's more than than that. It's not like it's way more than Homeland. Yeah, and they're and they're not breaking down the CIA in it and like right. the whole terrorism right attack on terrorism thing. Like it's not about that. As it's far its as own thing. as far as we could tell, he has no hidden agenda. Yeah, yeah, it's his own thing. Yeah, I th I think it's amazing. I loved it thus far. Yeah, I have. 
But I can't, I can't wait to watch the last episode. I know you took a break from it to watch something in particular. Oh, jeez. Uh, the Aaron Hernandez documentary. That's what everybody's talking about right now. That's what everybody's it's talking about. Shit. I do have to say this. One thing I just do not understand with, I, I, I wish I could say today's generation because it definitely involves my generation. It just seems like all women, for whatever reason, man, they love them some murderers. Yes, they do. Whether it be a serial killer, like that show You, I talked about this uh, the other week, People with You. This guy literally, in the show You, the guy's a stalker. He kills all kinds of people. He even kills a woman he's in love with in the first season. That's not a spoiler because the second season just uh, the second season just aired. But they love him. They're like, oh, I wish somebody would stalk me. What are you talking about? That guy murders people and murdered the woman that he was in love with. Yeah. Right, don't glorify this. The dude's a psychopath. So now the Aaron Hernandez things comes out, and all I see on so many women's timeline on Facebook is, man, Aaron Hernandez is hot, right? God, Aaron Hernandez is sexy. Oh, Aaron Hernandez this. The dude who, it may not have been completely all of his own fault because of CT or whatever, but regardless, the dude was murdering people. The dude was fucked up. He was fucked up, and he was murdering people. That's... You, you, that should not be your ideal man. I don't and, care if he looks good with the tattoos on his arms. He's a murderer. <laughs> he was out there with, like, he didn't have a lot of motive. He None. Just get upset. Wanted, he, he, he molded himself into this thug. And he did not start out he that way. He have grew up, to. He grew up in Connecticut in decent areas, decent, decent neighborhoods. He dug, and decided to be a thug. He dug these people out. He dug this lifestyle out. Okay. He, he, was, he, like, he, he wasn't he, born he into it. it he, he seeked it out. Yeah. Yeah. He searched for it. I was like, who did he dig up? What are you talking about? No. He, <laughs> yeah, he's, no. he sought this lifestyle. Yeah, he sought it out. It wasn't, he wasn't born into it. Mm. It wasn't like his, uh, like. He went and found it. Yeah. And and in my opinion, he was just his entire, like, he just was looking for ways to mask himself. He definitely was. And he was just fucked up in the head. That's what, like, he's more deranged than, than OJ. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. He literally had actually killed two people and was still playing professional football because nobody had any idea who did it. One thing I, I'm He not, got off, though. Yeah. Yeah, he did, but he did it. He had Casey Anthony's lawyer. That's why. yeah. I'm pretty that's sure. Why, I'm pretty sure. I'm it. pretty sure he did that. They found the car that he the had murder took place Casey in. Casey Anthony's lawyer. <laughs> yeah. The big. The only. The, the biggest ma- mistake he made in his life is not having that lawyer for the first trial. Yeah, because he might have been able to get off on that too. But I, here's here's what I'll say. I'm not going to say spoilers because it's a documentary. So it doesn't matter if we spoil it for you. It's not like it's a TV show. It already show. happened. I'm not, that's why I don't care about yeah. giving I mean, that it, shit it away. Hasn't been, it hasn't been aired for that long, but regardless, it's a documentary. So to me, it doesn't spoil anything. It's a documentary. It's not a season of something. But he, one thing that I found out watching the show that I had no clue of is it looks like he was more than likely um, at least bisexual, if not just a straight-up gay man with a beard. And it seemed like a lot of what he did was trying to hide the fact that he had those homosexual tendencies, which sucks because who cares if you're a homosexual? Who gives a shit? It's because he was in the NFL. The NFL. Or, and or always, always, the, always, because he was the, a football always player. the jock. Yeah. Um, and that's so unfortunate. I, nobody should give a fuck if you are a man who likes to sleep with other men. But I don't want to say that turned him into a murderer. Though. I don't think I turned him into a murderer, but it seemed like his crazy lifestyle that he chose to dive into was all part of trying to mask the he, fact that he was that he had things happen in his developmental years mm-hmm. that basically caused his brain to not develop well enough well, it is and pretty- to almost go backwards. Like he, you know, that's probably when he was like, uh, struggling with, um, his homosexuality the most Yeah, was in hu- probably when he was younger. Yeah. And, and, th- and then his dad died. And like, you know, he had the pressures of playing through injuries and who knows how many concussions well, it, this guy had. In yes, because his brain was very deteriorated in high school. Yeah, his brain was very deteriorated and his family life was fucked up. His dad died and not just a little bit after that, his mom uh, had a, his his favorite relative was this one aunt. Right. 
was it an aunt or a cousin? Well, the cousin was uh, the lady with cancer. It was his cousin, yeah. But it was her husband that moved yes. in with his mom afterwards as a couple. Yeah, like it was official. Like right afterwards, it was Facebook official. Yeah, and it was right, and, Carl. <laughs> and it was and it was Aaron Hernandez, like favorite relative, like the one that stuck with him through thick and thin when she was dying through cancer. She actually did time because when they put her on the stand, she refused to talk. So she did time. It was his favorite relative, and. It, her husband moved in and started seeing his mom like right after his dad died. I truly believe that he killed himself. I do believe he for, killed himself for that whole, like for the whole reason of trying to get money to, um, for his or, or for the case being dropped. Yeah. For his, like, that way I, he would still I get the new England contract. That that's a fact. Yeah. I believe that. I believe that 100%. Yeah, yeah. I do. I, I totally do. I like believe I, that. I think it's Subway's in his fucked up braid. He was also a good guy. It's Subway in his fucked up braid. He was also a good guy. But he was also a murderer. I mean, there's just no way around it. He also murdered people. Um, But Tommy did say it, he, he one of the funniest things. I was texting him about the show, and he texted me back one of the funniest things I ever heard. For those of you who don't know, I don't remember what I said. Aaron Hernandez was a tight end. But he was a very big receiver at the tight end position. Like almost like a why not. So I said some stupid fucked up joke. Uh, mine was more vulgar than Tommy's. So I, I don't want to say that was a personal conversation. But I said something about him being gay. And I'm like, oh, I'm watching this gay guy right now. And Tommy said, oh, yeah, uh, Aaron Hernandez loves when the tight ends receive. <laughs> It's a it, that's a that's a true fact. That's one of the funniest things, just because of the play on words and everything else that I have heard in a long time. I lost it sitting there on the couch by myself. My dog's <laughs> looking at me like I'm an asshole. Um, but I ain't it, right. It was it was a great documentary. It uh, I think everybody should watch it. It was phenomenal. Um, and really kind of let you dive into it. I kind of didn't like the way they did it though. I wish they would have just done a straight timeline. Yeah. Instead of I bouncing like the, back I didn't, and forth. I didn't like the bouncing either. You didn't have to bounce back and forth like that. Just give us a straight timeline. Right. Right. I agree. Yeah. I didn't I don't know. What's really just cra- what's really sad is just he was really talented. He actually might have been more talented than Gronk. Yeah. And if Gronk if you is gonna only, go down as one of the best tight ends of all if time. If you can only imagine the career that he could have had he just signed a deal just, for forty million dollars. And just think of like, like, just add that on to the Patriots' success itself. And I don't think they would have lost the Super Bowl ever with him and Gronk as yeah. their two tight ends. Like, I, I, like out of all the scandals that that franchise has been through in their during their dynasty, this is by far the just the the saddest of all of them. Oh and, yeah, and just the most unfortunate. And he lived two very separate lives. Like the, yeah. the the gangster side, he only did that with certain people. And everybody else that knew him thought he was just the best. They thought he was just an amazing person, so nice, everything else. What really upsets me is like I I I wish he would have went by a different name in his second life. I like why didn't he go with A. A. Ron when he was the gangster? That's the one thing I was I was I was upset that it that give yourself come out. give yourself like a different name yeah, like oh I ain't Aaron Her- Hernandez I'm A A Ron <laughs> him Nandez because I like Nandez. dudes <laughs> <laughs> I do I do gotta say though women stop loving murderers love love just like a, a decent man <laughs> y'all are out here binge watching all these murder shows these serial killers. And whatnot, y'all always pick the wrong type. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Stop, yeah, stop, stop worshiping these murderers. That's just that's one thing I got to say for sure. Like, so, I don't know if you like the cops in the in, in in the shows or something like that, but it's it always has to do with a serial killer. Yeah. So y- y'all got issues, okay? Actually, you know, one thing I should have added on my list maybe is that. Um, Carl, look this up. I, I, it was on Netflix. I think it was a believable, unbelievable. Be- unbelievable. Did you see that, Tom? Did you watch that yet? What is it? Unbelievable. No. Did Carl? Did you watch it? 
Oh my god, it's so good. True story. Oh, that girl was nominated for uh, a Golden Globe. It's a it's a true story, uh, but it's done as an actual show. It's not uh, or a mini series actually. Um, there there won't be another season, but it's a true story about this girl who I'll put in air quotes got raped. Turns out she really did, but in air quotes got raped, and it, she tried to report it and everything else. And these people convinced her during it to say that she was lying because it was they felt like it was just shoddy and she was making it up she had a history she was an orphan got adopted got out of adoption was living in like this group housing so people just didn't want to believe her and they convinced her to say that she was not telling the truth then not only after they convinced her to uh, say that she wasn't telling the truth they then the they sued her basically or no they charged her with a crime for saying that she gave a false report and then for all the time that some of these detectives put in on it they like charged her for that time so she had to pay money and then come to find out that this guy was an actual serial rapist he had done it so many times and it was one of the best things i've seen in a long time as well i can't believe you haven't watched that one that one's that one was really good although it's on netflix yeah and actually it had been on for a long time before i saw it so i shouldn't say that i don't believe you haven't seen it but Oh no! And I was saying she was nominated. This 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 was back in two thousand eight to twenty eleven. Or when did this show come out? Just recently. Just recently. Oh uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well then, yeah, that girl got her and Tony Colletti got nominated. Yeah, it was it it was unbelievably good. Huh. I think that might be the next thing I watch after I finish that last episode of Messiah. Messiah. It's it's really really good. No, actually, I literally I was just on the phone while you were, while you were outside, Carl. I was talking to my brother, and he said they decided to stay in and watch the second episode. I heard. Wait, bring up the Outsider for me. Yeah, let's talk about that for a second. Yeah, let's know what it's about. Kind of in the vein of True Detective, to be honest. Oh, yeah. oh really? It's like a detective type show, but with like a supernatural twist, a supernatural aspect. Yeah, Stephen King. Why? Why he's looking this up? Oh no, he's already got it there. Oh, it's Stephen <laughs> King. I love that. Uh, I I love all the stuff Jason, they're doing. Jason with... Bateman. Oh, Jason Bateman's in it. He's in it. He's, he's directing it. But this he's one... in it and directing it. Yeah. But this one's on HBO. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. So I, I actually, yeah, Jason Bateman was was. Oh, okay. No. So based on Stephen King's best-selling novel of the same name, The Outsider begins by following an investigation, which at first seems like it will be simple and straightforward, but things change as it leads to. The gruesome murder of a young boy by a second cop. So a cop kills him. Oh, seasoned cop. Young boy by a seasoned cop. Um, When an insidious supernatural force edges its way into the case, it leads the investigators to question everything they believe in. The character of Holly Gibney from Mr. Mercedes is a major character in the series. Uh, I mean, that's not the greatest synopsis, I don't think, but I will watch it for sure, especially if you say it's good, Carl, because you don't fucking watch shit, so it's got to be good if you like it. Right. Um, But Stephen King, I like a lot of stuff they're doing with him lately. Uh, Tommy, you watch that uh, Castle Rock? Which one's that? It's on Hulu. I watched the first season. First season was really good. Second yeah. season was also really good. Yeah. goes into like a separate thing. It has like Tim the, Robbins in it. I like the whole... Uh, Oh, that's not what I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of uh, the man on the cat or the man on the. Oh, a man in the high castle. Yeah. Yeah. What's no. this called? Castle. Castle Rock. Rock. Yeah. No. Which is where mo- uh, Castle Rock is an area where a lot of Stephen King's stories take place. Oh, okay. Um, but the new season, you remember the movie Misery? Yeah. So it has a lot of the characters from his books. What? In the series, but it's like its own thing. It, it doesn't take the stories from any of his books. Okay. It's like its own kind of world okay um, but it's all taking place in castle rock but uh um not elizabeth hurley god what is her name lizzie kaplan oh lizzie she's in it? lizzie kaplan in the second season she plays the younger version of the woman from misery okay and uh again another phenomenal show and i keep Wilkes. actually trying yeah. to read i bought a bunch of stephen king books and i'm trying to read them um he actually has a hard writing style to read he uses because he's a very intelligent guy. I have to stop and look up words. Like, I, what the fuck does this mean? And I have to look it up. And it, it'll end up being like, oh, it's a satchel or a bag. 
Like, why the fuck didn't he just say satchel or bag? Why did I have to stop to look this word up? <laughs> I get it. You're smart. But but I love so much Stephen King things in film that I, I feel like I really need to start reading these reading these books. But I'm, I started with the very first one in the Dark Tower series. And literally, I'm like a chapter in because I have to keep looking shit up. Like, it's just, that's just too much, man. Just... Just, you know, write normal. <laughs> this is on Hulu? Yeah. Castle Rock. Yeah, okay. you got to check it out. It's yeah, really good. I think I might. I had no idea it was even it's, it's all related Stephen to King. Stephen King. It's I all did, Stephen I had King. no idea. That make, Like, I'm pissed that I haven't watched yeah, it. Yeah, it's really good. So what are some of the shows you're watching right now, Tom? Or a movie you want to talk about? Um, Trying to think. Uh, trying to think of... Uh, like I'm all about the Joker right now, so I, I like I don't that know Joker movie. Yeah, I haven't. I, I rewatched it recently. Yeah, I haven't watched it yet. I do want to talk about it. I don't care about spoilers for me, and I don't care about spoilers for you people listening. The uh, from what I get, it is completely mood changing. It is like it. It'll actually fuck with you some, from what I understand. That's what I like about it. I, I like think it. that's phenomenal. Like, I think Requiem for a Dream is one of the best movies over, but it fucked me up for probably a month or two after I watched it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's some dark shit, man. It, it really is. Like, just everything about it and, and just it, a lot of it uh, that was shot was just improvised by Joaquin Phoenix. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Not like a lot of it, but they're like the, some of the most crucial scenes. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can I talk about them or yeah, talk about all of it? Yeah, they got this one where they're just, they just uh, he's in his kitchen. He lives in an apartment with his mom. Yeah, and he's in his kitchen. And he's just like having like a tantrum almost about like shit that's going down, and um, he decides to like the whole scene is just one camera, and it's just pointed on him in the kitchen, and. He just at the end of it, after throwing like this, like just this weird tantrum, he decides to open up the fridge. He takes out all of the shelves and all of the food that's in it and just climbs in the fridge and shuts the door and just goes in there to hide. Like, what the fuck? That wasn't written. It was just Joaquin Phoenix deciding to do it. That what they didn't write that into the movie. He just yeah. did it. Yeah, and there's several other scenes. How the fuck just, did he get out? You can't get out of a fridge. He just yeah. He just shut the he just shut the door and that was the end. Of the so scene. who let him out? I mean, the people filming the fucking movie, Dave. No, but I mean, in the movie. Oh, I don't know. He just all of a sudden was I mean, out I'm of sure, it. I, I think you can like kick the door open. No, from what I understand, you can't get out of a fridge from the inside. Google it, Carl. I'm pretty sure that I mean that was always the, at least, it's at least a wives' tale for sure that if you get into a fridge, you cannot get out from the inside. I know it, it was an older fridge, so maybe it was, <laughs> I don't know. If it's an older fridge, then it has a latch on it for sure yeah, that you can't I, get out of. I don't know if that. it's one of those older fridges, I don't know. That actually might be where it came from. That might be where it came from is the older fridges. They actually had like a latch, almost like a cooler door in a restaurant that you wouldn't be able to get out of. Yeah, it says in seventy. Okay, so they changed. So it changed in the seventies. Okay, so that's it's not a it's not an old wives' tale. It's something that used to be a thing. Well, um, that there was just some other scenes too, where like a, a lot of like just him dancing was just completely improvised. Like they just left the camera on him and he just went. And to me, it like the whole psychosis of the character and the whole like development of the character. It's one of the best individual performances I've ever seen. Nice. I'm, I, but I, I'm biased though. I'm Cause biased. you're a huge Batman guy. We've been, I over love that. the Joker, Yeah, but it was just that good. So Heath Ledger, Joaquin Phoenix. Oh, Heath Ledger still. Okay. Really? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Still. Now there is something I want to get into about this movie. Cause all the outrage that happens in the world, and there is some outrage on this, but I feel like it's not enough. Wendy Williams. Did anybody see that about uh, Joaquin Phoenix? No. So Wendy Williams was like talking about the Joker or something like that. And she literally started brutally making fun of his, what's it called? A hair lip. Oh yeah. 
His lips go. She's like, she's like, she's like, and who who finds him attractive? I mean, he's like this, and she pulls up her lip to like make it outrageous. She just sits there for a while, like, uh, 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 uh. What is the matter with you? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> yeah, like brutally is just, brutally for about maybe a minute is just making fun of the way he looks because he has that scar on his lip. Are you freaking serious? I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. Jeez. She said that she finds it very attractive, though. What's that called? Like a oh maybe she maybe she did say it was attractive, but still I feel what like they, when the clip I saw it, she they did... call it a, a cleft palate. Yeah. Oh, uh, a cleft palate? Is that what they call it? That's which seems weird because a palate should be inside your mouth, right? That's like your palate. Yeah, he doesn't have a cleft palate. He's what a cleft palate looks like. Way worse. Yeah, way worse. He just has like a some weird scar on his lip. I it's, bet he, ha- really I bet he had that when he was younger, though. And that's that's the scar that he has from it. Baby. Baby. Because all be. we're looking oh, yeah, right now are actually, baby pictures. Actually, if you look at some of these, are actually before and after. So that could be way more reasonable right there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's wild. I do have to ask you because you're a. Actually, I want to ask you two things, uh, Star Wars related. The first one is Mandalorian. How did you feel about it? Oh, shit. I wish I. Yeah. I wish I would have. We would have brought that up. What do, how do I feel about it? Mm-hmm. It's amazing. See. I, I feel like I'm not as hyped about it as some people. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, but those people that are like so critical against it are wrong. I'm not as hypercritical as some other people. They're hypercritical. It, it's, it's, it's some good shit. The, it's, it's the best Star Wars adaptation that we have seen. Yes, I'll take one. Um, I think show-wise, it's definitely the best Star Wars John adaptation. Favreau created that. Yeah. And he's a genius. Yes. He and did such a great job. It has so much Star Wars nostalgia within it that, like, you know, the criticism that it's getting is like, like, all oh, the episodes are just like, like it's... Like it's procedural. Yeah. Like, uh, on this week's episode of Mandalorian. Okay. But what, why they're seeing it that way is because they're, because they're used to seeing Star Wars as a movie. And when they see it as a like an episode TV show, it, they're like, "Oh, what the fuck!" I, like, like, take it for what it is. It's got everything you need in it, and it it's just good shit. See, I really liked the show. I just don't think. I actually think there are. I think there are two. There are two different versions of the fan. I think one is hypercritical. I think one is hyper excited. Well, yeah, I'm on the hyper excited. And I think, yeah, I am. I think it should actually be more in the middle. I just don't think it was like groundbreaking Star Wars material. I think if you're going to go for something off of the of the uh, basic storyline of the nine movies or of the Star Wars universe, I think Rogue One was exceptional. Well, yeah, I mean, it is. It, that's that, out of all the movies, it's in my top three Star Wars movies. And what I love, one thing I, I like to bring up. Carl, you were here for the last time I brought it up. See if you could pull that guy up again. You know what I'm talking about? No. What? Well, no, I'm talking to Carl. But oh. so all the special effects and stuff they paid for. So the guy that's from Breaking Bad that plays the general. Yeah. Did you r- recognize how cheaply done and terrible his costume was? No. We got to find the right picture. There's one picture that shows it just so perfectly. Can can you zoom in on that pic? Because that pic is perfect. Can we make that bigger? Ah, it's still it's still not enough. Yeah, I mean you can kind of tell. Also, I don't have my glasses on. So yeah, but he was just he was just coming back from like a war, and maybe it maybe it's I'm sh- not talking about that. Got ruined. <laughs> Look, those are, no, I, it's nice and shiny. Look, those are supposed to be like lights and stuff. Those are clearly just. Painted on, oh, like man. very, very clearly. <laughs> well, maybe he had to do that because the lights broke in the war. So then he paint. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was just like, I gotta keep this costume looking cool. Give me some paint. It is the worst thing. What? <laughs> what have you done now? What is this? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> you googled chess piece. No, off Gideon chest piece. You actually ended up finding the perfect picture of it last time. I wish you could find it again because it is so horrendous. Even click on that one. See if that see what that one looks like. 
See, it the, does look really bad. In it's that. so corny yeah. and so cheesy. He's wearing a turtleneck with a clearly cheap piece of plastic on top of it, and it's just painted on. It, it could have been armor that he picked up. You off spent a dead body. so I don't care. Why would it have fake lights and shit on it? Why? I don't know. And then the other joke I like to make is also at so all of these movies we've seen from different sci-fi things with robots and androids. This is a knock on I love Star Wars. Let's get that clear. I love Star Wars. I love everything Star Wars. But why are their robots all so shitty? Like Terminator. Great great androids, great robots. Then you go to Star Wars and it's like, well, this one has a bucket for a head. <laughs> like you could travel at warp speed between galaxies and you can't make a decent fucking robot. You you would think that like and, and all the robots would look probably like like the same to where they were that uh, sophisticated. But yeah, they do like they always have to look really dumb. They have really janky robots. Yeah. Like R two D two is basically like a garbage disposal. He's a garbage can that can fly a plane. <laughs> That's what he is, and he beeps. <laughs> and he beeps. And people understand what he's and saying. And for some reason, people like, understand yeah. exactly what beep, he's beep, saying. Beep 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 beep. Like oh, oh that man. was the most inspiring shit I've ever heard. <laughs> Thank you, President R two D two. Beep 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 beep. <laughs> It's just so crazy to me. And then C-3PO is the only one that looks like remotely human. And he's basically a scrap heap. <laughs> yeah, he was built by a poor kid. <laughs> and now he's looking like solid gold. He looks like Bicentennial. He man. does look like Bicentennial. But man. see, I think Bicentennial Man actually looks better than every single robot in yeah, the Star has, Wars he universe. He has an actual face. <laughs> yeah, you're right. They couldn't do that. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's just it's so crazy how shitty the robots are. They have the technology to make them, but they can't make them look cool. Yeah, not just that. They have the technology to literally jump into a hyperdrive or warp speed or whatever and travel to another galaxy in the matter of a second. But you can't make a decent robot. I think that's what the whole the whole nostalgia aspect from Star Wars is, though, is like they like make these droids look like something that you could have made out of parts from your own home. Well, I, I, and they and they made them relatable. And if I am correct, Star Wars doesn't actually take place in the future. It takes place in the past. Yeah, a long time ago. In a galaxy far, far away. Yeah, a long time ago. So then again, maybe that's why they're all that's why maybe that's why they have janky robots. Yeah, they just didn't they, have, they didn't they, I mean, I I never even saw a blender on Star Wars. So they, they didn't even have a blender. <laughs> They, they, had, they didn't have a microwave. I didn't see one goddamn iPhone. <laughs> but I saw some fucking hologram. Yeah, they were essentially still using walkie-talkies. It's like they had the technology or like the computerized shit figured out. Like it was way like it, it was like way beyond advanced of what we could come up with. Well, but, actually, then they, but then they didn't have the structure or the infrastructure for the parts. Yeah. Well, that's act, what it, that, that's what it is. And actually maybe they were smarter than we are today because they focused on important things like travel, not yeah. like how we can keep in contact with the same people in 15 different ways. <laughs> like, right. Like, you know, we need, we need uh 30 types of social media so that we can all keep in contact with each other. And, uh, but who cares about space travel? Yeah. <laughs> They were more concerned of, of yeah. let's make this garbage can travel. <laughs> give, give this garbage can a message and, yeah. and uh, have it have it taken to save the entire the entire republic. But so then the other thing I want to talk about was I should have went with you. I didn't, so I haven't seen it yet. I'm not worried about spoilers. What did you think of Rise of Skywalker? It is out of the most recent three episodes. And in the previous, obviously three. the previous three, yeah, those were trash. And, and I'm not counting Rogue One here. No, I it's think Rogue my, One's incredible. It's my favorite of all of them. Yeah, out of those ones, my top three Star Wars movies. And and I I'm going against the critics here on this because it's really getting a lashing from people. But um, my my top three Star Wars movies are Empire Strikes Back, Rogue One, and The Rise of Skywalker. It wrapped up. Um what it needed to yeah it if you if you can't realize 52 percent of rotten tomatoes fuck the 48 percent of you i do i do like looking at that sometimes to just kind of get a gauge for movies but i also find myself disagreeing with rotten tomatoes a lot it's very subjective it it wraps up it 
if you don't understand the fact that it brought balance to the force and the whole story, the Skywalker saga was all about bringing balance to the force. Okay. Yep. If you do not realize that this movie did that, it achieved that storyline, then I'm sorry, you are a fucking moron. And you can you can post about it all you all you want. It it, it doesn't make you a smarter of a per- person. No, you're just it, like, well. Just and people, take the movie for what it is. And people love to hate. People they love, love to, hate. to hate. I I don't do that. That's just not it. I don't I don't love to hate. I make fun of people, but I accept movies for what they are. Yeah. I, I Like and and I think that I feel they did a good job. They also went back to. Like they they brought this these team of characters together and they made a whole new team back how like Han Luke Leia Chewie C three PO and R two D two were and and even include Obi one in that in in the um in the New Hope but they brought these people together and they went on this like one main mission and what they decided to do with Kylo Ren's and and uh, and Ray's relationship. They did everything right. Yeah. I what like I wasn't upset to hear any of it. I was actually intrigued and I enjoyed it. I the w- only thing that it, like the one surprising thing is like I only saw it in the theaters once so far. But that's mainly just because of like I I go and see movies less. Yeah. If I if I was still as active as a movie goer as I used to be, I would have seen this at least three, three or four more times since I saw it the first time. But I just, I'm just not. I'm, you know what I mean. But I, I it's not because of the quality of the movie. I didn't do that. Yeah, right. I liked it. I enjoyed it. The um, obviously, I, I have to imagine that we already know the answer. But I, I need to know from you. Does Luke make another appearance? Um, not visually. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So I, I just don't understand Rise of oh, wait, Skywalker then. I really can't remember if he was in it or not, but if he was, it was like either it was either just voice. It was definitely voice, but um, it could have been a flashback. But so what no, does she, he did, doesn't. So what does she end up being a Skywalker? She names herself a Skywalker. Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Do you, know, do you know what she actually is? Do you want to know? Yeah. Do you really want to know? I really want to know. Yeah. Hey, uh, spoiler. Five, four, three, two, one. She's Emperor Palpatine's granddaughter. Oh, actually, I did already read that. Yeah. I forgot about yeah, that. She's a Palpatine. Yeah. But she sticks with the Force. She sticks with the Force. Nice. And Kylo Ren has to uh, basically sacrifice his life oh, baller. in order for her to live. Like for her to live, Leia also sacrifices her life for Kylo Ren mm. to live. I actually tell you one thing. And I... she turns. Leia dies so Kylo Ren can uh, uh, find the light. Nice. That's awesome. And. Kylo so, Ren, man, they're really, they actually are going to, from what you're telling me, they wrap it up great. Yeah, Kylo Ren died. Like, the whole Kylo Ren Ray thing just brings balance to the Force. And yeah. it ends with her naming herself a Skywalker. She goes back to Tatooine and buries Leia and Luke's sky, uh, lightsabers into the ground. I didn't know and, Leia had a lightsaber. Yeah, she was using, she was using Leia's lightsaber for a while. Oh, no shit. And, uh, um, she ends up uh, making her own yellow lightsaber at the end. Nice. And she says that I'm um, like at the end they ask her who she is and she said she's a Skywalker. I do have to say lightsaber cooler coolest weapon of all time. Now one thing I want to say I'm upset about with Star Wars and it's definitely George Lucas's fault. I forget who told me the story, but George Lucas wants Yoda's history to be a complete mystery. He doesn't want anybody to know. Uh, and he, there was actually even a part of a, I don't know, remember if it was a commercial or a game, but he actually took him to court so that it wouldn't be on there because he didn't want people to know about Yoda. He wants it to be a mystery. What you said that? George Lucas. Okay. I don't remember who told me this story. Okay. But if that is true, George Lucas, I think you're fucking up because what would be cooler to any Star Wars fan than a series of movies of Yoda becoming Yoda, yeah. the best Jedi Master of all time. What would be cooler than that? 
Would anything be cooler than that in the fucking world? It's it's what I've always wanted to see. Yeah. Like, like how did you become the the OG, the best, the best Jedi Master of all time? Even the, like this, I was the one thing I was impressed with with um, the first three episodes that came out in the uh, you know late nineties, early two thousands was um, Yoda's physical skills as a Jedi. It right. was it was actually like the. He could like fucking, run on the walls, he was, and he was spinning midair. He was extremely shit. fast. Yeah, I want. I want to see. I want to see more of that. He, to me, he was the most powerful Jedi because when you see anything with him in the movies, he could like easily lift like an X wing with his mind. He could move things no problem. Even when you go into like, I just recently started watching Clone Wars, the cartoon. My biggest problem with the Clone Wars is in the storyline. It's the animation. I don't like the way the animation is done. But, I mean, the dude can literally just, like, do anything. Like, you know, he can move anything with his mind. He can stop a whole avalanche from happening with his mind. That's how powerful he is. Then he's the smallest guy on any battlefield, but he can just move so fast, run on walls, basically float through the air, do whatever the fuck he wants. And that's the guy that you're not going to give us the fucking story on? Yeah. How do we not have that fucking story? Are you what, out of your fucking mind? What's even more crazy is is for the Mandalorian, now there's this baby Yoda out there that can that can basically do the same thing. Yeah. He's and a, heal. He's a baby Yoda, and he picked up a whole biggest rhinoceros you've ever seen. Yeah. With his body. Just yeah. took it right off its feet. So the fact that it just like, his so maybe powers are that strong, it... it, it, it was passed well, on that strong. Well, and maybe, well, maybe what we'll find out through this Mandalorian series is that it's that species that is just very strong in the force. Cause we also don't know anything about that species. I we think, know nothing about it. As a matter of fact, Yoda was his name. It wasn't the species. It was his name. Yeah. And nobody knows what to call this other thing. Cause we have no idea what to call it because the only thing we've ever seen like him is Yoda. I truly think, and I hope that this series brings or the Mandalorian series brings more Yoda, um, the you know the the whole species to life. Yeah, like I, I really want to know hope more. It goes I there. want to know more. I want to know where they're where he's from. I want to know what they are. Yeah, and I I really like to think, like one possible theory is like you know there's just some being or creature that for some reason is close closest to the force than any other species like they're almost like they're maybe even created by they're almost we've like only the, seen two in the whole they're universe almost like, they're almost like like if you think of the force as god yeah yodas are like jesus guardian angels mm-hmm. almost you know like protectors of the force right and that's where i i just hope a lot of those things actually get written into this series if they if they steer away from it that's when i'm gonna be unsatisfied if they steer away from the yoda storyline i want i want i want answers about yoda and his species through the mandalorian if they don't live up to that that's when i'll be pissed pissed yeah i'm not pissed now though because they're obviously going that route and there's he there's the power of healing uh the first time a jedi showed the power of healing was by baby yoda but they decided in in this last movie there's a power of healing in that too. Uh, I can't. Oh, okay. It was either in the Ren, Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, Ren yeah. or Ray used it. I can't remember which one. No, yeah, no. They, um, they both did actually. Ray used it to save a creature to get them out of this cave or this hole in the ground, and then Ren used it. Uh, Who's Ren? Kylo Ren. Oh yeah. He used it to save Ray. Now, actually, and but he ended up disappearing. But I do have a, another. But qu- this power of healing shit. Yeah, it, it's important. The first time you saw it was with Baby Yoda. Yeah, and then they decided to incorporate it into the Rise of Skywalker. I truly think that like this, like the power of healing is going to go further into the Star Wars universe. It's yeah. going to be like it's we didn't see it before. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I actually do have another question. The uh, Finn. In the in the Rise of Skywalker movie, did they end up connecting him to the Force at all. Um, it almost seems like he like wants to say it, but they never act. No, there's no hardcore. There's no hardcore evidence. Because to there's me, no proven to me for him to last for a second in the very first movie, uh, in this trilogy, I think he's Force sensitive. I I think he has to be because for him to last for a second against Kylo Ren in a lightsaber battle 
has to mean he has something. Remember that one guy uh, from Rogue One, the blind guy? Mm-hmm. I think he's like him. Kind of force sensitive. He's yeah. force sensitive yeah. or whatever you call it. Uh, but they don't really, they don't go into that storyline that much. Yeah. They well, don't. Well, we got to wrap this up because we, uh, I do want to hit one more little thing, but we do have to wrap it up with this because we have fights to go watch. Um, this part actually isn't going to be part of the wrap up, but I do want to know right now, uh, we, we're about to go watch, uh, uh, Cowboy versus McGregor. Who's your pick in that fight, Tommy? Uh, well, I'm wearing my Notre Dame jersey tonight. Or not jersey. I'm getting Switch drunk. It. I'm sorry. It's all right. A little That's what here. we do. We get I drunk. A, I need a Red Bull. I need to wake up. Um, but yeah, I'm, wear, I'm wearing my Notre Dame hoodie. And I also got Boston Celtics socks on. So you're going Fighting Irish? Of course I am, dude. I'm yeah, rooting Conor for McGregor. every time. I, I don't know enough to say who I actually think. but You don't know enough opinion, to get though, into the Cerrone, breakdown. Cerrone, I, just, I, I think he's more... Um, He's more glamour than 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 actual uh, skill. Would you say more? You by that do you be like more name? Like yeah, like, like he's 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 popular. Yeah, he's uh, well, older too. yeah, yeah. I, he he's, got he's, this, he's, he's older. He, I think he got this fight by popularity. Oh, for sure. And it's and gonna I, be. I, just, I wouldn't be surprised if it broke pay per view records. I don't, of the two popularity. Of I, the two I fighters. think he's gonna get his ass kicked. That's what I think. I think if he does do what he says and tries to just straight up stand up with Connor. I don't think it lasts more than a round or two. Um, my reason, being somebody that watches UFC a little bit more, and maybe uh, after I say this, Carl can give me a very loud yes or no because Carl watches them religiously. I think that Cowboy has a very stiff stand-up mode, even though he's good at it. He throws kicks, he throws punches, he's good at it, but it's very stiff. It's very straight up and down. He doesn't do a lot of head movement left or right. And I think if you're going to try to stand up with Connor on that, he is just so fluid in his stand up that he just picks him apart. It might be as bad or worse than when he fought Eddie Alvarez. So you basically said the same thing I just fucking said, but you just added more words. <laughs> so I know just as much as you do <laughs> that McGregor's going to win this fight. But Carl, very big uh, yes or no. Do you agree with me? I agree. Yes. All right. And he's a Cowboy's a slow starter too. So if they, those first couple of oh, rounds, oh, that's going to be big. Yeah, he's he a very slow it, starter. If he can make it through the first couple, it, 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 it'll be a good fight, I think. Well, and even though I don't think uh, Cotter's jujitsu is as bad as people think it is, I do. I do not think it's top level, but I don't think it's as bad as people think it is. Um, I do still think if Donald decides to take it to the ground and try to get some submissions, he definitely stands a better chance. He does, but I don't think he's going to. He's I don't think he's going to. I think he's at the end of his career. He's kind of knowing that a title shot really isn't there, and he wants to put on some exciting fucking fights. Yeah, agree completely. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. Oh, fuck, I can't wait for it. I I'm hope okay I hope it. he stands up, and for some reason, uh, I do hope Connor wins also because of a lot of different things going on with the different title races in the UFC. Um, but I hope for some reason he doesn't finish him till the third or the fourth and we end up getting a banger. Yep. All right. But so the last thing I wanted to hit with you was upcoming movies, movies that you are either excited for that aren't in theaters or ones that are already in theaters. I already have Carl pulling, uh, up a list of things that are coming out. Okay. I got one that I can't wait to see. What's it's, that? It's the new Christopher Nolan movie that's coming out. It's called Tenet. It's with, um, Denzel Washington's son, who oh. was on Ballers, I think his name is like John David Washington or something. Oh, like that. I, I didn't even know he had a son. And uh, Robert Pattinson in it, is in it too. Actually, uh, Carl, before you go Ten- to Tenet, T E N E T, Carl. Carl, be- honestly, before you go to that, I want to know who Denzel Washington's son is. He was on the show Ballers. Yeah, but who? The wide receiver. That's Denzel. The, guy, yeah. the one from the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, and he was in Black Klansman. That's Denzel Washington's son. Yeah. No shit, he's a good actor. Yeah, John, I had da- no, John David Washington. I it? had That's no clue that was Denzel Washington's son. He's awesome. Yeah, I like him a lot. So he, this movie's coming out. I think like either May or July. I can't remember, but um, it's the next big Christopher Nolan movie. It's got an Inception type feel. Dude, I think he is going to be a very big actor. I thought that at Ballers, I was like, I don't know where this guy came from, but he plays that role perfectly. Yeah. I actually thought he might have had a sports he was, background. He wasn't Oscar nominated, but he was Golden Globe nominated for Black Klansman. 
No shit. Like I, I never watched that. That was his breakout role was I Black Klan. It. it was great. Spike Lee, Spike Lee joint. Yeah. But okay. But so what's it about? Tenet? Yeah. To be honest with you, I can't say too All much right. about it. it. It's Give us a synopsis, it's so Carl. It's Inception-like. It's almost like, um, I think they go to different, it's either about like time travel or different dimensions. I One of the two. All right, so Tenet is an upcoming action thriller written and directed by Christopher Nolan and produced by Nolan and Emma Thomas. It stars, yeah, it doesn't give us it doesn't give us any information. Time travel and evolution. Very good, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so revolving around international espionage. All right, yeah, I'm in. I'm in, and it's got Robert Patterson in it. I'm excited to see him in a big movie before he becomes Batman. Yeah, and I like the whole link. Uh, to Nolan, Christopher Nolan. It's almost like Batman. he's getting Nolan's blessing. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know he asked Nolan a lot of questions. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah! How do I make this more about like your movies and the other Batman? Yeah, that's what you need to ask. Yeah. I, I I know this one is out in theaters, but something I'm excited for that I can't wait to see. I I, I don't go to the movie theaters that often anymore unless I do go with Tommy Two Phones, Mama Mia too. No, <laughs> but I'm very excited. <laughs> I, I'm actually excited to see that new Bad Boys movie. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I, I would like to see that. I want to see that. I mean, that's just a fun movie. It's not going to be Oscar nominated. I, me- I remember seeing Bad Boys 2 in uh, The Drive-In. Oh, yeah. It was I- great. Actually, something I have to ask you about, um, even though it's it's already out, but did you watch Peanut Butter Falcon yet? No. God damn it. Why doesn't yeah. anybody watch this goddamn movie? I'll watch movie? it. I, just, I, have to, I have to be in the right mood. Dude, it, you, you really don't. It's great. Actually, have you ever seen Mud either? No, I got to give you mud. I have mud here. I don't peanut butter falcon. Thad borrowed. I got to give you mud. Next movie, next movie I'm watching. Like the next time I feel like watching a movie is because uh, it's. I think it's out on Blu-ray now, and I can I can buy it or rent it. I mean, and uh, is uh, Zombieland two. Well, I'm buying that as soon yeah, as it comes I, out. Can't I wait. It's not out yet. No, it, either next week or the week after. Okay. I can't wait, though. Yeah, I can't wait for that. Double tap, that's what it's called. All right, so other movies coming out here in the future. I am excited about the possibilities of the new Ghostbusters movie. Yeah. Paul Rudd's going to be in it. Yep. Uh, and it actually relates to the original movies. Yep. I'm very excited Egon, for that. Egon's grandkids are in it. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of what else is coming out. Uh, Tommy, what, come on. you got to know some shit that's coming out. Uh, dude, I, don't know. I gotta look it up, man. I wasn't prepared. Go back to that list, uh, Carl. All right. What do we got here? The houses. I'm trying to blind eye. Oh, The Gentleman. I'm excited to yeah. see. Uh, very excited to see that actually a movie about uh, Matthew McConaughey's being a one of the biggest weed dealers of all time. I think it's a Guy Ritchie film, film which also excites me. Can, can you go back to that? That's not a good enough list, Carl. Go back. Go back to something that that was just like January. No, I just don't, come on. I didn't, I just went through January. There's more. Okay, we'll go further then. Oh, you know something I'm super excited for? What? Um, Avatar. Oh, yeah. Is that coming out this year? It's either this year or next year. Avatar. I am super excited for that. I still love that movie more than I'm most people. I'm looking at this list, man. <laughs> what the fuck? 2021. All right. Go back to what you had before. All right. It's so- a comprehensive list. <laughs> yeah. Sonic the Hedgehog, I'm excited for just because of, of being a child. I'm just going to scroll. Oh, well, hold on. Slow down a little bit. Greed, Call of the Wild, Brahms Boy. Man, I, I feel like there were so many movies I wanted to talk about when I had it on the top of my head, and now I'm not seeing I, any of them on oh, here. Oh, Wonder Woman. Oh, I'm definitely excited Harley for the Quinn Wonder movie. Woman. Well, the Harley Quinn movie, I'm excited for maybe specifically because of Harley Quinn. I'm not sure how good it's going to be. I think it's going to be good. Top Gun. Oh, man. I couldn't. Put your phone down. Let's talk about Top Gun. I'm so excited for we're going to end on Top Gun here. I am so excited for Top Gun. I don't even care about how bad I have to piss right now. <laughs> I am so excited for Top Gun. I loved the first one. I think now, like, I love all movies with fighter jets. I don't know why. And now think of the first Top Gun and how exciting the jet scenes were. And now think about what they're going to be able to do with the jet scenes now. It's going to be incredible what you can do with that and 
Maverick, I think, is one of the best, most uh, conf- in- interconflicted characters in movie history. I really do. I think everybody should be excited about it. Val Kilmer's coming back as Iceman. And you know who else is in that, Tom? No. Miles Teller. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw that. I love I think, Miles I think he's going to play like um, like the, the, the bad guy in it. I, I will think. see. I think he's going to be. Think. I think he's going to be the next Maverick. You do? I think that's what he's going to be. Okay. I think he's going to be like the guy that's like Maverick. And Maverick has to kind of like take him under his wing. Okay. That's what I think is going to happen. Stupid name, though. I hate when people have the same first letter for both their names. His, like, his name in the movie is Bradley Bradshaw. <laughs> That's Brad, dumb. Brad. Brad, Brad. Stop it. <laughs> nobody nobody even thought to, to to fix that, like, beforehand. There's a, there's a movie coming out called... Jennifer the- Conley. Her character is listed as single mother. <laughs> Jennifer Conley, one of the biggest actresses of all time. Her character name is single mother. <laughs> what are we talking about, single mother? Carl, I just realized your shirt says Beats and Rhymes. You are you are a hardcore guitar person. You love rock music. You don't really like that much rap, and your shirt says Beats and Rhymes. I, 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 this shirt was bought for me. It's a cool fucking shirt, though. It is a cool shirt. The next the next generation of X Men's coming out called the new the New Mutants, mm-hmm. and Maisie Williams is in it. I'm excited for that. That one's actually been predicted to come and out for years. Whoever Charlie Heaton is from Stranger Things is also in it. I don't know which yeah, I'm not sure. one that is. James Bond. Oh, I, mean, I actually am excited for that new James Bond. I got to tell you, I was hoping... Uh, I was hoping Black we, Widow. Uh, yeah, can't be more excited. I can't be exce- more excited for anything Marvel. I can't wait for the shows to come out on Disney and all that. But I, I got to be honest with you. We got done talking about Top Gun, and I said that made me forget how much I had to piss. Now I know how much I have to piss, and we're not taking a break and coming back. We just got to wrap it up. So uh, we're going to wrap it up, Tom, unless you got any closing thing. Stay safe, everybody. Stay safe, everybody. No, I don't have anything else. He's, he's talking to us, stay safe, because we got to go travel to go watch these fights. <laughs> But uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. We'll have more on the entertainment scene next time Tommy Two Phones comes on. He's going to come on more regularly. And uh, this is The Gathering of Fools. We're out. And we're back. Just kidding. Good night.